impressed at how well they've held this field together with all the rain. Test one, two, three, four, five. Test one, two, three.
Blue Jay fans, just in case you didn't know, all the seat back seating in front of the press box is reserved seating. All of the seating in front of the press box is reserved seating. At game time kickoff, if there's empty seating, then you can fill them in, but all seating in front of the press box is reserved. of Guthrie football, four-time state champions. Staley gets the snap. He's running with it left side. Touchdown, Attaboy. Blue Jays. Guy Staley and the Blue Jays regain the lead. Next time that I talk to you, I will be talking to the greatest team in Guthrie High School history. The Blue Jays are looking to add yet another gold ball made of Guthrie blue. Ryan Dunn takes the snap. And there you have it. The 2011 Class 5A state champions are your very own Guthrie Blue Jays for the third time in school history. And they have dashed onto the field. Motion to the left side. They run to the left side with Alexander. Across the five. To the one. Touchdown. I day Alexander. And for the fourth time in school history, the Guthrie Blue Jays are your Class 5A state champions. And strike up the band one final time. One thing that will never be replaced is MTXE. Mental toughness. Extra effort. It's being determined to win in the face of all odds, all obstacles, and uh, coming together as a unit to accomplish that. Year after year, the Blue Jay offense is amongst the most prolific offenses in all of Class 5A. Option reverse to Callis. Callis looking for throw. Wide open place. Hastings, can they connect? He does. Touchdown, Blue Jays. Reverse pass, and the Blue Jays are on the board. Strike up the band. It's that time again. It's time for Blue Jay football. Get Horn Landry Chapel gets every Blue Jay fan off their seat. It's now. Strike up the band. On the Guthrie Radio Network. Blue Guthrie football. <laughs> Open up mics. It's time to go. In three, two, one. Guthrie Football 2018 is brought to you by Interbank, strengthening our communities through community banking. Golden Chick, the original and still the best. Terra Insure Group, insuring your world. John Vance Auto Group, where it's comfortable to buy a car. Guthrie North Church, love God, love people, follow Jesus. Mercy Hospital, Logan County, your life is our life's work. And Eskridge Chevrolet, a name you can trust for over 50 years. Guthrie Blue Jay Football is also brought to you by FM Bank, Signal Financial Management, Guthrie Tag Agency, A Team Overhead Door, Nelson Monument Company, Hayes Funeral Home, Sonic at I 35 and Highway 33, and Merritt Roberts Farm Bureau, Oklahoma. Welcome to Guthrie Football. The following is a production of Guthrie Football, spanning across the Blue Jay Radio Network. Throws it up for Dante Boston, a triple coverage. Oh, oh my goodness! Are you kidding? Now, let's go live to the stadium with the voice of the Blue Jays, Chris Evans, and tonight's Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show. 
It is one of the best rivals in the state of Oklahoma. And tonight, it's on the surface of Gelsma Stadium. Guthrie and Carl Everweek is here, and the state is watching. Good evening. I'm Chris Evans, and this is the Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show here in historic downtown Guthrie as we get set for tonight's contest between the 6-0 Guthrie Blue Jays and the 6-0 Carl Lauer Titans. Join me here in a few minutes with the call of the game will be Phil Nichols and Craig Fleck. Thanks for joining us here on 93.7 FM and online at Guthrie Sports Page, Guthrie News Page, and the Guthrie News Page mobile app. The Guthrie Carl Lauer Series once again has the attention of the state from the fans to statewide media. With that, though, the winner this evening takes a big step toward a possible district championship. The Mighty Titans enter the game on a 28-game winning streak and winners of 33 of their last 34 games. Sophomore quarterback Ben Harris has started his career with an impressive 20-0 record. Carl Everett is the class of Class 5A. There's no doubt about that. However, if there was one team that has proven over the years of winning these big games, Guthrie is near the top. We'll continue after opening timeout as we count you down to kickoff. Up next, a look at the Carl Albert Titans. You're listening to the Interbank Blue Jay Kickoff Show on the Blue Jay Radio Network. I'm Brian Sterkle with Interbank. You can bank on Guthrie's home team, the banking professionals at Interbank. Our decision makers and the people who serve you work closely together to provide responsible service and personal attention. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing our friends in Guthrie and the surrounding communities at the Blue Jay football games. We're located at 224 East Oklahoma, or you can reach us by phone at 282-0470. Interbank, in it for you. Member FDIC. For decades, Guthrie Athletics has been a source of pride in the Guthrie community. Hi, I'm Merritt Roberts, and I've been a Blue Jay supporter and Farm Bureau agent for many, many years. I want to wish all the Guthrie student athletes not only a great season on the field, course, track, or court, but in the classroom as well. If integrity, honesty, and accessibility are important to you, call Farm Bureau at 620-4920 and ask for Merritt. I would welcome the opportunity to give you a professional evaluation of your insurance needs or simply stop by and let's talk about the Jays. Have you heard the big news here in Guthrie? You know the Guthrie Tag Agency is your local source for all your vehicles, boats, ATVs, trailers, titles, registrations, and of course, driver's license renewals and replacements. But now, the Guthrie Tag Agency helps with driver's road tests. That's right. Take your road test right here in Guthrie. No more trips to Edmond or Stillwater or Enid. Call and schedule your appointment at 282-3873. Guthrie Tag Agency, open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and on Saturdays from 9 to noon. Accepting the loss of a loved one is the hardest thing we will ever have to do. At Nelson Monument Company, formerly Warren Monument Company, we aim to make selecting a memorial an easy and healing process. With our compassionate service, state-of-the-art design software, and our new and improved facility, we offer the best overall experience in the industry. Nelson Monument Company, located at 5305 South Division Street in Guthrie. Give us a call at 405-282-3220. Hi, this is Asa Nelson, and from our family to yours, we would be honored to gain your trust. The two-time defending state champion and undefeated Carl Albert Titans have made their way to Jellisma Stadium. The Titans have many reasons to be confident heading into the state's game of the week. Both Guthrie and Carl Albert enter this year's matchup with identical 6-0 overall records and 3-0 district records. This game marks the 39th meeting between the two programs, with Carl Albert holding a 22-16 advantage. In the last 17 meetings, Guthrie has tasted victory 11 times. The Mighty Titans, who have won 13 football titles in program history, comes in on a 28-game winning streak and winners of 33 of their last 34 games. Sophomore quarterback Ben Harris has yet to taste the feat and holds an impressive 20-0 record. Carl Albert under second-year head coach Mike Corley has not been tested in the last four games in lopsided wins over Shawnee, Guymon, Piedmont, and Northwest Classen. However, in the first two weeks, they got past their Middale rivals, Midwest City and Dell City, in one-score games. Big news out of Titan camp is the health status of talented running back Daydream Taylor, who returns following a knee injury in week one. Taylor, a 5'11", 175-pound senior, rushed for 135 yards and two touchdowns in week 
week one before being removed in the fourth with the Titans ahead 28 to 7. The playmaker named Rabbit has earned eight scholarship offers, including Army, Navy, Missouri State, and Western Illinois. A season ago, Taylor rushed for 1,977 yards and 22 touchdowns, averaging 9.2 yards per carry. Taylor and Harris are two of the five players returning from last year's team. Harris, as a freshman, passed for over 2,700 yards and added 35 total touchdowns. The Guthrie defense will be challenging both the run and pass games. The Jays have held their own in the season's first six games by holding their opponents to 10 points a game. But the bar of where the Jays stand will officially be known after tonight. This is the Interbank Blue Jay Kickoff Show. Hey, Blue Jay fans, Eskridge Chevrolet is a proud supporter of Guthrie High School sports. This season, Eskridge Chevrolet at I-35 in Guthrie is cheering you the whole way and will help you score a game-winning deal in getting the new or used vehicle that you need. Don't worry about your credit history. Eskridge Chevy can get you approved. Come see us at Eskridge Chevrolet. Just a short drive to I-35 in the Guthrie exit on Division Street. Call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY or visit EskridgeChevy.com. The Interbank Blue Jay Kickoff Show continues next. Hello, Blue Jay family. I'm Pastor Hetty. I want to invite you to North Church Guthrie, where you can expect fun, Bible-centered kids and student ministries, life-giving groups, engaging worship, and powerful messages. I would love to see you and your family at North Church Guthrie this Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. at Guthrie Upper Elementary School, where our vision is to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. And remember, God loves you and go win. Welcome back. Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show continues on Hot 93.7 FM. Well, the Guthrie Blue Jays are off to the best start since 2014 with a 6-0 record. A big part of this success has come from the Blue Jays defense setting up the Jays offense. In the first six games of the season, Guthrie has turned their opponents over 23 times. That's right. 23 turnovers. Guthrie has created at least one turnover in each game and at least four turnovers in four games. In week one, Enid finished with six turnovers, and in week three, Ponca City finished with five turnovers. The defense has come away with 22 of those turnovers, while special teams collected one back in week one. Of the 23 turnovers, 10 have come via interception, and 13 by fumble recoveries. Perhaps the most impressive part is that the Guthrie defense has cashed in on nine of those scores by themselves, with five picks sixes and four scoops and scores. Meanwhile, the offense has done their part in taking advantage of what has been given to them by scoring nine out of 14 times. In total, the Jays have scored 115 points off of turnovers, which averages just over 19 points per game. It's a trend that the Jays would like to continue to see down the stretch of the regular season with Carl Albert here tonight and McGinn is coming in a few weeks. This is the Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show. When it's time to buy your next new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, please think of John Van Sauter Group in Guthrie. We're just right around the corner from where the Blue Jays win football games. We work, shop, and worship in the same community as you. John Vance and his family and employees are usually in the stands rooting for the Blue Jays just like you. So keep us in mind and know we'd appreciate your business and promise to show it. John Van Sauter Group, it's all true. I-35, exit 153 in Guthrie. John Vance Auto Group. I'm Brian Sterkle with Interbank. You can bank on Guthrie's home team, the banking professionals at Interbank. Our decision makers and the people who serve you work closely together to provide responsible service and personal attention. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing our friends in Guthrie and the surrounding communities at the Blue Jay football games. We're located at 224 East Oklahoma, or you can reach us by phone at 282-0470. Interbank, in it for you. Member FDIC. Now, let's go live to the stadium with a call of tonight's game. Here's Chris Evans, Casey Porter, Phil Nichols, and Craig Fleck. Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show continues here inside Jails Mustang, Missouri, downtown Guthrie. Glad to have you on board. Hot 93.7 FM KSBI as we get set for... Another edition of the Guthrie Carl Albert Showdown in uh, Phil. This is a good one. Six and O, six and O. Titans, as you heard in the in the previous segments, 
have looked good last couple of years. Two-time state champions and uh, off to another great start this year. Yeah, I think you reported early this week, Chris, 133 of their last 34 ball games. Obviously, I think all of us agree the, the absolute cream of 5A is Carl Albert Titans. But I got to tell you something, this Blue Jay team, 6-0, really playing well as a, as a football team right now. Um, defense has been lights out, forcing turnovers left and right. So we should have one well of a ball game tonight. And here in a little bit, we'll have the national anthem, a special national anthem tonight as Miss Davenport's uh, kindergarten class will be singing the national anthem. I think we're just moments away from having that here in just a matter of moments. It's also Pink Week here in Guthrie, so a lot of happenings here tonight on a fun atmosphere. Well, every time Carl Albert and, and Guthrie get together, it's a fun, fun atmosphere. It'll be packed and had the littles out earlier. Had the young cheerleaders from Guthrie out on the field, and I know at halftime we're going to have the Little League Blue Jay football teams out on the field, and as you said, Pink Week, and of course a good friend of ours. Um, you know, Tara Lynn is, is, is this year's um, a person for the Pink Week that they really go out and try to do support for, and we all continue to pray and, and for the Lynn family, for Eddie and the kids and for Tara. And I think we're set for tonight's national anthem. Let's go downstairs. And there is tonight's <laughs> national anthem, and uh, a lot of people enjoy that. Again, Miss Davenport's kindergarten class, they, they, they have moved up to the big stage this year, Phil. Usually they do that for uh, Casey Porter and the Guthrie baseball team right, uh, right. every single year, but they get the big stage yeah. with uh, Guthrie, Carl Albert, and here on a Friday night. I think I got a new favorite rendition of the greatest song ever written. That was, all, that was outstanding. Absolutely. Now the... Uh, Home crowd being introduced to the uh, the Pink Week, and uh, again got through high school, uh, collecting money to help the the family of Terror Lynn, and uh, just a tough deal uh, that that whole family has gone through uh, with her, with her story, which many have are, are hearing it now out there. Just a tough deal for that family, Phil. Yeah, I mean, you know we've we got to spend some time with Tara and the family, you know, prior to her going off to. To DC for this treatment, and you know we just, like I said earlier, we just got to continue to pray for Tara and for the for the whole family, and and just continue to love on them and support them any way we can. I mean, this is a, a, a horrific disease that so many people have to battle, and their loved ones battle, and um, you know, everybody just needs to continue to support Eddie and the kids, and obviously Tara with prayer and and literal support you know it takes a lot to do what eddie's doing back home right now yeah and as you see there uh, if you're watching the video there you get you see the uh the family there the the uh, three girls and the two boys and, and the pink stuff over to the yeah. left of, of us as well and got the balloons and so cool deal for them and uh it's just any any scenario like that i feel as you go through is always tough and you look at those those little ones out there it makes it a lot tougher yeah it's hard to hard to uh you can't get your arms around that yeah, right absolutely and so they are doing that, and uh, uh, Tara and Eddie not here tonight. The the, no. the, the, the children obviously are, but the, uh, uh, Maryland, is that where? The D.C. area. Yeah, D.C., and, yeah. And, you know, and Eddie's – actually, Eddie's, Eddie's about 30 minutes into his flight to go out and spend, you know, the next few days with, with Tara at the hospital. And, of course, you know, he's, you know, he's here taking care of the kids and working and doing all the things that life has to continue to go on. And, 
And I know that Tara has an incredible support system. You know, we see on, on social media, Chris, all the time, great friends going out there and spending time with her and really rallying around Eddie and the girls and the whole family. But, um, you know, Eddie is just absolutely one of the quality men you'll ever meet and just a wonderful family. And we just continue to pray for a, for full recovery for Tara and, and uh, get her spunky self back out there telling everybody what they're doing wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> get their high school band getting ready to march off to the uh, fight song as we get set for Guthrie, Carl Albert, and uh, time now for our escrow Chevrolet's keys to the game. And there's there's a whole bunch. I mean, we've been talking about this all year long, especially all week long. But uh, bring in Craig Fleck first and get his thoughts on his escrow Chevrolet's keys to the game. Well, you look at this game, it carries a significance that it hasn't in quite some time. You know, the last time these two teams came into a game with this kind of significance, this kind of feel to it, these seniors were in junior high. So this is a new experience for a lot of them. But I look at this game last week, I looked at the defensive side of the ball for the Blue Jays and said first downs were the key. Tonight, go to the other side of the ball. And third downs are the key for the Jays tonight because they have to be able to move the chains, keep that Carl Albert offense and Dadrian Taylor on the sideline. That is, they're going to be their best defense tonight and the best way to stop him is to keep him on the sideline, keep the ball out of his hands. Win on third down, move those chains. The Jays will have a shot at winning this one tonight. And Phil, you look at the last two years, Carl Albert, 100, yeah. got 317. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the series over the last 17 years has been one of the best in the state in 5A for darn sure. And last two years have been very lopsided. I think, you know, this ball club has a different feel for it this year. And, I, you know, my keys are very simple. we got to slow down, much like what Flecky said, got to slow down number 16, Dadrian Taylor. Force Harris to beat you with his arm. Now, the kid's an outstanding quarterback, but we need to force him to complete the ball downfield. Guthrie's got to continue to force those turnovers and get pressure on Harris all night. And hopefully when they do that, they will force some of them turnovers. And then, um, you know, Carl Albert, they just need to establish a run with Taylor. If they establish that run, it's, it's going to be a long night. And it, but, but at the same time, they got to learn, they got to be able to contain number three, Marcellus Owens. And in my opinion, one of the most explosive kids that Guthrie's had in quite some time, C.J. Ward. But turnovers and mistakes in a ball game like this are always, always very, very critical. And those are your escrow Chevrolet's keys to the game. Real quickly, our Mercy Health report. Goosby had the uh, had the, sh yep. the sling out a few uh, first few days of this week, and I saw him at practice Monday, which he wasn't really participating a whole lot Monday. I said, you will be able to go? He said, oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be set to go. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how that is. That's the only Mercy Health report. Of course, Jamal Rohn is out for the right, year. Right. You know, Dominic, you know, as you said, I saw him, and I don't think he practiced much all week. It was precautionary, get him, just get him healthy and a little beat up. And then number three, Marcellus Owens had a little hip pointer type thing going on last year. I shouldn't say hip pointer, but a, some type of hip injury going on. But Marcellus has been doing a lot of a lot of therapy and doing well this week too. And so I think for the most part, after six ball games, pretty darn healthy on the Blue Jay side. That is your Mercy Health report. And uh, uh, the interesting thing this week, I got through high school football practice, Phil. Uh, I went up on Monday. You went up on Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, of course, the the big part for this Carl Albert team is the running back in Dadrian Taylor. They call him Rabbit. And uh, so what what does Coach BB do? Well, he gets out one of the best athletes in Guthrie history and Josh King, puts a number 16 jersey on him and says, hey, I need you to run against my defense because you're physical, you're pretty quick, and that's what they're going to see on Friday night. Some of the kids were talking about he was too old to be out there, and after about five minutes they changed their tune pretty quick. <laughs> Josh still got a lot of shake in him, but, but no, it, it, it's great. That's great for all the kids to be able to see somebody that's got a different level of, of speed and quickness because that's exactly what they're going to see. And we haven't faced anybody with the kind of speed and quickness that Dadrian has. You know, of course, the Phillips kid, we talk about him all the time. I think that caliber of running back, but a very different type of running back and definitely doesn't have the speed that Dadrian has. Of course, Josh King, remember that 2007 state championship team went 14-0, and and uh, it looked like he was having a lot of fun out there oh, on practice. Man. I asked him, I said, does it feel good to put it on one more time? Because this is unreal. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's – uh, it's 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 good to have that kind of and Josh is so passionate about the program, never misses a game and as little boy plays you know, playing little league football now and little girl was out there earlier with the cheerleaders, that's what it's all about, right? Those kids coming back home and establishing their homes here and yeah. 
and being a, continue to be a part of the program. Normally, it's a 7 o'clock kickoff. We're going to delay it a little bit to yeah. 7.05 tonight, so we still got a lot more to go here on the Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show. Can't tell you right now, the temperature right now, 58 degrees. Uh, the humidity, yes, the humidity, 82 percent tonight and uh, the wind not too big of a factor when it's when it is blowing not blowing right now but out of the north at seven miles per hour and uh, luckily the good news though with the weather report is i don't think we're going to see any rain tonight i think there's some coming in over the weekend but uh, uh, kind of gloomy kind of sh- uh, sprinkled a little bit on and off today here in the guthrie area but kind of tapered off there uh, mid-afternoon yeah and i think you know we were talking about the field earlier you know it's soft obviously from all the rain we've had but it's in great shape i mean they've done a fabulous job taking care of this field over I've never seen the field look this good in October, yes. I'll promise yeah. you. Um, but it's definitely soft track down there. And, you know, we were joking around a little bit with some other guys in the in the booth up here and saying well, they thought our grass would be a little bit taller than it is, you know, mm-hmm. uh, alluding to Rabbit, obviously, in his quickness. But um, field looks great. Um, it's just going to be a great night for football. I don't think weather will be a factor in any way. I can tell you, I've seen many rabbits, and they can run it. tall grass, short <laughs> yeah. grass. Rabbits can run, That's so right. I, I don't expect any difference here. Yeah. As this uh, Jealous Miss Dam continues to fill up here, the Carlover Band has made their way across the way. Carlover fans starting to fill in as well. And uh, as we wait the captains to come onto the field, as you can see on the video feed, the cheerleaders in the band making a formation on the near sideline, awaiting their Blue Jays to come out onto the field. They're still in that baseball locker room right now, getting some final instructions from head coach Kelly Beebe. But you look at District 5A2, Phil, uh, this goes a long ways uh, to maybe getting that playoff spot. To, uh, many think Carl Albert, and I, and I certainly agree, Carl Albert is probably one of the three teams that will definitely somehow make their way to host. But if Guthrie can get a win tonight, that goes a long ways to getting at least one playoff game before uh, having another opportunity when McGinnis comes here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, big-time ball game for everybody involved. I mean, I think most people in the state, I think the Oklahoma had had CA picked by eight, and I think that's pretty much right on. You know, I mean, I think if you take your heart out of it, I think that's how you'd pick. But um, this is the kind of game, as we talked earlier this week, Chris, on our, on our show on Wednesday night, if there's somebody that can beat him, it's, it's this club, right? I yeah. mean, Guthrie, historic thing. We've won 11 out of the last 17 ball, you know, contests against CA. Um, but it's, you know, it, to get a home, uh, to, to host a home game in the playoffs for the Blue Jays after what, you know, for us has been very down, still been in the playoffs and everything. We never haven't missed a playoff appearance in some time, but that would be a big time deal for this Blue Jay squad. To get even one home game would be a big deal, but got to beat Carl Albert tonight. That's the first one. And then uh, get ready for two weeks when, uh, uh, Bishop McGinnis comes to town. And you look, Bishop McGinnis, big winners last night. And so um, it's Guthrie, McGinnis, Carl Albert, one, two, three. Yep. That's, but the, I said it on Wednesday night that it's going to be weird. A good team out of this district, which this 5A2 has been good for a long, long, sure. long time when you bring in Deer Creek and Shawnee uh, in years past. But one, Guthrie, Carl Albert, or McGinnis will have to go on the road. And it could be somewhere like Altus. It could be Dunk. You know, there's, there's going to be an – Interesting matchups uh, come first round of the playoffs. But, uh, again, back to my point, a good team will be on the road. Uh, it could be a couple hours on the road, but uh, still plenty of football season left here. Of course, Guthrie has two big ones uh, tonight, and then Bishop McGinnis, luckily for Guthrie, both at home. And next week on Thursday night, they'll go to Northwest Class and then finish up the regular season Week 10 with the trip to Cameron Stadium and take on Lot Eisenhower in Week 10. Blue Jays will be favored in there. But, uh, it, it, again, tonight and a uh, couple weeks, it'll be McGinnis for uh, – playoff positioning yeah i mean i think everybody would agree it's going to be one two three obviously in those with those three teams one's going to be on the outside looking in as far as hosting a game and we've made that drive before in the first round long long ways away from home yep. and it's not it's not any fun but but i you know like i said this team there's some there's something going on there's definitely a, a, something in the air with this ball club for, for guthrie right now playing so so well as a unit you know so just a lot of fun we mentioned field conditions. Guthrie getting ready. Captains are starting to make their way out of the locker room, so we're getting close to, to having captains, and we'll hopefully bring that toss to you here in just a little bit. But um, the field, it, it, is, it is slippery out there a little bit. It is wet. I mean, it's, it's been raining, seems like, forever yeah. uh, here in the last few weeks. But uh, the last time Guthrie saw conditions somewhat like this was back in week three with Ponca City. Guthrie had a hard time offensively uh, getting things going. They had four, uh, 14 points in the first three quarters and seven, eight, ten minutes yeah. before getting two late scores to make it a 28-14. But uh, kind of similar playing conditions tonight. Yeah, I think I think Ponca was a little wetter, obviously, but yeah. and, it, and it was continuing to rain when the game started. But 
Yeah, very similar as far as the turf itself and um, and just the the you know the softness and the slipperiness. But you know, I think that the difference here is that it's not actively raining right now, and I think that's the big difference from the Ponca City game. Another big note uh, for the Carl Albert Tynes, and there's going to be a lot of, especially on offense, that we'll take a look at. We've already mentioned Deja and Taylor throughout this entire uh, pregame show, of course, brought to you by our good folks over at Interbank, Brian Sterkle and Tyler Calvert. Oh, they do a great job yep. just across, just down the way here from Gelsma Stadium. But another guy we got to talk about here is Ben Harris. We saw him as a freshman. Uh, he, all he's done is gone 20-0 so far in his high school career. But what a big difference from freshman Ben Harris to sophomore Ben Harris. Uh, he's a lot thicker kid. You know, we're looking at him down on the hoof. I mean, he looks like he's put on 15, 20 pounds and very controlled person. You know, we, we asked some folks that that, are, that, un, that know the CA program. So he's a great kid, smart kid, does all the right things. Baseball player as well for the Carl Albert Titans. And so just a great athlete that can flat out spin it. And anytime you can come in as a freshman and then into your sophomore year, be 20 and 0. Obviously, you got something going on between your ears, right? And yep. some natural leadership ability. So, Ben Harris, I think to date, is probably the best quarterback without it. Well, not probably. He is the best quarterback we've faced to date. And no doubt. And last year, you're like, okay, Ben Harris, he's a freshman. He's got Taylor behind him. He he can throw it up in the air and let Jason Taylor and yeah. Diego Richards go get it. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't that easy. I mean, he's he's a good quarterback. Good Doesn't job. have those type of players, but they still got a good rece receiving core. But he can put the money on the spot. It's not going to be the prettiest thing that you see on film, but it gets where it needs to be. Well, I think you know, bottom line, 20 and 0, right? And I and I think too the he, he's a bigger kid. You know, he's six foot or better and. He's, he's athletic. I mean, he can get out and move around a little bit when he needs to. So I just, you know, he's, like I said, he's ab absolutely one of the best QBs that you'll see in 5A um, no matter where you're playing. Captains are making their way to the field. Captains for the Blue Jays will be number 55, Dylan Dollar, number 56, Parker Rainey, number 35, David Scott, and number 17, Dominique Goosby. For the Carl Albert Tynes, Dadrian Taylor, number 7 is going to be De Dejuan MacArthur. And we'll get to that here in a second as we go downstairs with tonight's coin toss. Okay, fellas, real quick. I'm going to make this really quick. Um, gray talks to gray, white talks to white, okay? You, 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 do anything you, you, other than that, it's going to be 15, okay? Get up and you do the King Kong thing, it's going to be 15, okay? So you're going to call it? Yeah. And you're going to tell me what he calls. What are you going to call? Carl Roberts has called Carl he said has heads. Called heads. Okay, this is tails, and that's his. We've got a – this is our honorary – flipper tonight. So if you'll flip it and if she drops it, we'll do it again, okay? And you called heads. That I said in here? Yeah, no, no, we're good to go. And it is tails. Blue Jays You've won the toss. Okay. Blue Jays will defer. Let me stand over here like this. They are going to defer. Okay, so you guys want the ball, I'm sure. Okay, which way you want to kick? He said to kick, earlier, he said kick to okay, the rock. Okay, kick okay, let's do the midfield shuffle right here, fellas. Let's go this way. And there you have tonight's coin toss. The Blue Jays won the toss and the fur. Blue Jays will be kicking right to left. So first off, we'll see Ben Harris and the Titan offense. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, what we expect. Anytime Guthrie wins the toss, you're always going to see Kelly BB defer. And, and uh, just a fabulous job. Down. i got to give a shout out to Kel Evans. Did a yeah. fabulous job down there. Cover. I mean, I, I can never go down there again. He just showed me up first time out and blew me out of the water. Yeah. So, great job, Kel Evans. I told him, put the microphone like you own it, and just, uh, he, did. he did a good job. He did a great so, job. Uh, so, uh, now Guthrie and Carver taking a, uh, a picture with the, the Lynn family. Yeah. And so, we're just manner of moments from kicking this one off. Both teams to our right are ready to come out of the uh, end zone onto the field. And, of course, it's always the battle of the flags, uh, the big CA flag <laughs> and the big GHS flag. Of course, there's the JAYS flags. For our radio audience out there as well as 93.7 FM has another great game here this week uh, with Guthrie and Carl Albert. Glad to have you out there in North Central Oklahoma. Of course, worldwide on our video feed at YouTube.com backslash Guthrie News. You can go to social media, find us on Guthrie Sports page or news, Guthrie News page and link the link and it'll get you there as we await uh, both teams to come onto the field and finally, finally kick this one off. We've all been waiting for this all year, and Coach Kelly Beebe told us last week, this is the week we get a measuring stick. This is yeah. the week where we see where we really are. 
you know, obviously we've talked about, Chris, the combined record of the opponents that Guthrie's beat. Not that impressive, obviously, but so this is really the first really, really quality football program that we've played this year and should be one heck of a ball game. If you're Blue Jays, you're hoping it's one heck of a yes, ball game. Yes, you're hoping. <laughs> and here come the Blue Jays out on to the field. 6-0 and on the season, 3-0 and in district play. The biggest challenge, though, stands across the sideline here tonight. Blue Jays in a great-looking uniform. Silver helmets, of course, the Guthrie G on the side, the blue face mask. Going gray on gray tonight. Gray uniform tops. Guthrie on top of the chest in white letters. Blue numbers on the front, outlined in white. Also on the back is the blue numbers outlined in white. And the gray pants as well. Many Blue Jay fans say, yeah, this is my favorite uniform combination. It's my favorite. Yep. I mean, it just looks sharp, sharp, sharp. Carl Albert Titans will be in the red football helmets. Of course, the CA logo on their side. And... Uh, they got the uh, white jersey tops with red numbers out with the gray pants as they come dashing on to Jell's Miss Stadium. A couple of players stumbled, tumbling already here at the 30-yard line. They're hoping that's not the way things will go on here the night, entire night. Adrian just ran a 9 4 uh, 100 meters out of the... <laughs> That kid can fly. <laughs> Absolutely. We got a great officiating crew, as you expect here tonight. The referee is Reggie Redwine, the umpire Kyle Carnes, headlinesman Devin Simpson, the line judge is Francis Nolts, and the back judge is Mick Hart. And they are at the Oklahoma City Metro Officials, Officials Association. Heck of a crew, experienced crew, the kind of crew you would expect for a ball yep. game like this. A uh, state tournament, state championship yep. uh, feel to it as well. Carver Tynes have made their way to the sideline. Blue Jays have huddled up with the special teams coach Rick Mashu at the 40-yard line. As you heard in the coin toss, the Blue Jays won the toss and will kick here, kick off here in the first half. And this has been the Interbank Blue Jay kickoff show. Glad to have you here on this Friday night. Temperature below 60 degrees. It's about 58 degrees out there right now. We're expected to go low 50s, maybe upper 40s by the time this one Ends. Do you think we can get some of that in here? Because it feels a little warmer. Now feels a little, well, you told everyone to shut the door. And the, well, maybe we need to open it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, when you look at Guthrie, uh, one of the biggest weapons Guthrie has is David Vargas. And, uh, again, he'll be kicking off. But great kicker, great punter, and uh, has shown the leg this year on, on the, all those field goals that he's hit this year. He's, uh, what, four of seven on field goal attempts this year. Season yeah. long is 37 uh, yards uh, in the uh, win over Piedmont. And so... Hopefully, um, that will be the difference. David Vargas pretty good. Well, of course, you know, getting it in the end zone, your best defense, especially number 16, is back deep to receive it. And, yeah, you know, if we can take that out of his hands, um, that's that's a win right there. Yeah, David has kicked it into the end zone throughout the entire year, usually 5'8", sometimes out of the end zone. So, as you mentioned, hopefully that will be the case here and eliminate some of the touches there by Dadrian Taylor. Vargas looks to his left, looks to the right, and approaches the football. We're underway. Got three, Carl Albert, as Taylor will fill the ball into the end zone. Of course, unreturnable in high school football. And here come the Carl Albert Titans, 6-0 overall, 3-0 district play. They are led by their quarterback, number 12, Ben Harris, six foot, 180-pound sophomore quarterback. Of course, he'll be handing the football off a lot tonight. The number 16, Dadrian Taylor, 5'10", 170. He's a senior. Rushed for 1,977 yards a year ago. Got hurt back in week one, so he's had limited action. In fact, didn't play for about a month. Got a few touches last week, I, I believe, is what I saw. But uh, they had got three circled for this one. No doubt. Times will open up a three-receiver set. Two to the far side. Now man in the motion. Harris will give it off to Taylor on the left side. Across the line of scrimmage. And stopped at the 24-yard line for progress. We'll get it to the 25. He's tackled by Turve Williams. Turve, the leading tackler last week in the Jays' victory over Woodward. And he saw right there Turve reaching in there, trying to rip that ball loose. You know, this, this group, they smell blood when it comes to these turnovers. And you, you'll, that'll be a factor in the game. They're going to be going and trying to rip that ball loose every chance they get tonight. Titans to the line of scrimmage. A five-yard pickup for Taylor. So it's second down to five from the 25. Ball on the far hash mark. Two receivers to the near side. Harrison Taylor fumbles the football. Harris picks it up. He's back into the 15-yard line. Going to try to run the football. Thought he might try to throw it away, but he's hit behind the 20-yard line as the Blue Jays were chasing all the way down. Kate Whitfield was there. Josh Rain's also there for the tackle. Looked like maybe Harris probably should have just got rid of the football. He is well outside the tackle. Well, you know, Harris kind of gave himself up there. He was well inside the, the playing field, but gave himself up and took a hard, hard hit from number 34, Cade Whitfield. So kind of his way of saying, hey, this is a ball game, brother. Let's get it going. So that puts 
the Titans behind the chains. It'll be third down and 12 as he was tackled out of bounds at the 18 yard lines. Titans will need the 30 yard line for a first down. 44 seconds gone by here in the first quarter. Blue Jays would love to get a stop here on the opening drive. Three receiver set, two to the far side. Four seconds on the play clock. Harris snaps, gets the snap, comes near side. It's a high pass over the head of the intended receiver, incomplete, as Chris Vells never had a chance at that one. And David Sky, Dominic Gooseby on the pressure of Harris. It's fourth down and 12 and punting time for the Titans. That's a big time stand. You know, three, get a three and out against Carl Albert Titans to start this ballgame. It's going to do nothing but feed confidence into the Blue Jay defense. We'll see what uh, Marcellus and C.J. can do here on this punt return. Both C.J. and Marcellus back near midfield. 11-10 to go in the opening quarter. Punter for Carl Albert inside his own five-yard line, stands at the three. It's a good snap above the knees. It's a good punt as Marcellus goes back into Guthrie territory, builds it at the 40-yard line. Here's the return back to the 35, cuts it to the 40, block in the back, 45, there's a flag midfield and out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And it was an obvious, very obvious block in the back. And so this one will be backed up. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And Marcellus made a nice return, advanced the ball about 15 yards. But as you said, we're going to be walking it back from the spot, 15 from there. Three flags. That's uh, that was that's how obvious it was, Chris. <laughs> it, 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 it's real obvious when the play-by-play -play guy sees it yeah. uh, right in front of everybody. I, I don't know how anybody did not see that. So the first penalty will go against the Blue Jays. Defense three and out, off to a good start here. So we'll see what offensive coordinator Scott Mick has in store for this opening drive for the Blue Jays. Penalty will move it back to the 30, call it the 31-yard line. So instead of around near midfield, it's going to be indeed placed at the 31-yard line. First down and 10 for the Blue Jays, led by quarterback senior Jackson Waddell. Jays will open up with three receivers, two to the far side, one to the near side. Justin Adams on the left side of quarterback Jackson Waddell, who's in the shotgun. Half back in motion, right to left. They hand it off. And that actually is Kel Kaufman getting the carry. And he loses one yard on the play. So check that is Kel Kaufman in there to get the first carry and loss of one. Second down 11 upcoming. Kind of what you'd expect to begin a ball game like this. Keep the ball on the ground. Try to establish a running game. Energy's high. Anytime you're in a ball game like this, you got to get some of those, uh, those butterflies out of the old belly. Ball's at the 30, second down 11, clock rolling, 10-20 play in the opening quarter. Two back set for the Jays, now in the motion. Jackson rolls to the near side, looking to throw. Plants the feet, nothing there. He's going to take off with it. He gets across the original line of scrimmage, but down at the 32. It'll be second down and nine for the Blue Jays. You know, nothing doing for the Blue Jays on these first two plays from scrimmage. Offensive line's going to have to establish something up front for the Jays and give Jackson opportunity to set up and running backs opportunities to find a lane and do some cuts and but it's all going to start and stop with the big uglies up front Chris. No doubt the Guthrie offensive coaches just wanted a little bit of time from that offensive line to try to create something. Third down and 13 officially for Guthrie. Four receiver set. Jackson play action. It's through the hands off the shoulder pads of Talik Jackson would have been a first down, would have been a big play, but unable to haul it completely in. It was a good throw by Jackson, just didn't make the catch. Had a lot of heat behind it, but that's a ball that should definitely be caught. And I know that's one that Jackson wishes he could have back, no doubt. Jays are going to be lining up to punt. Three and out for the Jays as well. David Vargas back in punt formation. David Vargas this year. 32 yards per punt. Pretty good, and this is a pretty good punt here as it bounces around the 47-yard line. Takes a little Guthrie bounce, and it'll be down at the Carl Albert 44-yard line. Tights back onto the field offensively. No score between Guthrie and Carl Albert. 9-20 play opening quarter, 28-yard punt for David Vargas. Yeah, David, that's, you know, disappointed with that effort, I know. I mean, he's, you know, Carl Albert's really flipped the field there. They're setting starting out on their 44-yard line. Not where you want to be if you're a Blue Jay fan right now. 
Titans, first down and 10. Four receivers this time, two to each side. Pistol formation, play action to the near side. It's over the head of the intended receiver as Ben Harris has had a hard time finding his rhythm offensively throwing the football as they go sailing over the head of Rico Wendell. Ben's been high on all, really all three of his passes he's made tonight. Some of that's just energy, obviously. Got to settle down. Some of that also is, I guarantee you watching film, he realizes he's got to get rid of the ball against this Blue Jay yeah. defense. I yeah. mean, they will put pressure on you. Senior Campbell Leach, I guarantee you, has caught a lot of people's attention this season. Second down and 10. See if they go back to Taylor, try to get a first down or a third down and manageable play here. Harris actually wants to throw for it. Wants it all downfield, has a man wide open. It's incomplete as streaking wide open down the field was number 15, Anthony Davis. Good speed there. And if Harris could have put it on the spot, it would have been six, but he overthrew him about four or five yards incomplete. Yeah, he was wide open, and that was definitely six points they connect there. So sets up third and 10. You would think another passing scenario here for the Titans. Huddle up, so both teams will huddle up. Not very many games do you see both teams huddle up. Very rarely you see it in 6A football. A little bit more so in 5A in the smaller classes. Third down and 10 for the Titans from the 44. Harris rolls to the near side, throws it on the run. It's caught in Guthrie territory at the 45, spinning all the way down to the 40-yard line. About a 16-yard pickup for the Titans. Looking to bring that one in was number four, Chris Bells, I believe is who that was. Yeah, it was Senior Bells. You know, great route. Got some separation between him and the defensive back, and Harris put it right on the numbers to move the chains for Carl Albert. Hector Goosby on the tackle. The first first down of the ball game goes to the Titans. 8.55 in rolling here in the first quarter. No score. Got three. Carl Albert. Harris looks at that Blue Jay front. He'll send three receivers to the far side, one to the near. The ball's on the near hash mark of the Guthrie 40-yard line. Play action again. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Is that uh, Josh 13, Reigns? Yep. Yeah, Josh Reigns batted that one down. And so you, you, are you somewhat surprised here that Carl Irvin has gone with the passing game early yeah. on? Yeah, I said that, you know, this is what Guthrie needed to do. He needed to force some Harris to beat him with his arm. And, you know, who knows? If I had 16, that poor kid would be worn out by the end of by the first half. And here's the deal. If it's Adrian Taylor or Chris Evans running the football, it doesn't matter. Kelly Beebe's going to stop the run. That's, that's yeah, the first that's thing what he's he going to go after. That's yeah. what he does. Second down and 10, Ben Harris, one of five passing tonight. Here comes pass at 10, number six. Here's the pressure. Harris can't get away. Throws it to the last second. Oh. Almost intercepted by Turvey Williams at the 40-yard line. If he can bring that one in, that might have gone to the house as well. As Guthrie has turned their opponent over this year, Phil, 23 times. Yeah, I think nine of those have been, been for scores. And Campbell Leach, senior, we talked about him all year, Chris, has having an outstanding senior campaign right up in the face of Harris, forced that pass. Should have been picked off, and I think would have been would have been six more for the Blue Jay defense. So Titans one of six passing. Obviously another passing down here upcoming on third down and ten. They need the Blue Jay 30-yard line. Three receivers to the far side. Pistol formation. Harris comes to the near side. It's caught at the 35, bringing the tackle 30. And the Titans, if they can stay in balance, is going to have a touchdown. It is a touchdown, Titans from 40 yards out. A missed tackle leads to six points. Yeah, you know, they're picking on our sophomore number seven. And that's something, you know, it's, it's tough. When you're out there on an island, you're a sophomore, first-year starter, you know, you're going to have plays like that. He's just got to get back in the game. He's a good, good young athlete. Shake it off, get back in the ballgame. Anthony Davis with the 40-yard touchdown reception to give the Titans an early 6-0 lead. Jacob Eddy on for the PAT, kicking on the right side of the radio dial toward the baseball stadium. Snap, hold, kick is a line drive. It's up, and it's good. Titans on the scoreboard, 7-0, 8-24 to play the first quarter. Timeout from Gelsma. This is Guthrie Blue Jay football. Glenda here with Jim and our Red River Roofing crew. You've known us for 16 years of quality roofing services, and we are also proud installers of Diamond Coat Pre-Finished Siding. This quality wood siding product is scratch resistant, comes in custom color options, and will actually increase your home's resale value. With a 30-year no-fade warranty, this siding is sure to impress. Durability is number one, so choose a stylish exterior siding that will last. Call today to boost your home's curb appeal with beautiful Diamond Coat Siding. Visit us at RedRiverRoofing.com. 
Effidem Bank is a neighborhood bank with eight branches and 17 ATM locations across four counties in central Oklahoma. Effidem Bank can help you with all of your personal, business, and agricultural banking needs or simply add efficiency to your business. Check out Effidem Bank with online and mobile banking at www.fmbankok.com or download their app and have all of their services in the palm of your hand. Effidem Bank is a neighbor you can count on. Effidem Bank, member FDIC. the ball one time on their second offensive drive, but doesn't matter. They go six plays, 56 yards. The big one, 40-yard touchdown pass, Ben Harris to Anthony Davis. The drive took only 56 seconds. So, with 8.24 to play in the opening quarter, Carl Albert 7, Guthrie 0. That is your John Vance Motors scoring summary. John Vance Motors, where it's comfortable to buy a car. Blue Jays, or excuse me, Carl Albert field Tipped a lot of passes. They've only completed two, but both come on third down and ten. Yeah, I mean, Carl Alberts just came out, and we talked about it, forced them to pass, and they did, and they've definitely connected on that first series, or that, excuse me, that second offensive series, 40-yard touchdown pass. Blue Jays got to come right back here, establish something on offense. If not score, they need to flip the field. Jacob Eddy to kick left to right. Titans that were off sides and the ref officials saw that. Man, I've seen two penalties. This is a this is gonna be a good night. Hey, real quick, boy, do we got a great listening audience out there? We got uh, Ronnie and Sarah Phillips, the the, the in laws, watching in Ohio. Hello. You got Charlotte Chapel listening in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Puerto Vallarta. And you have Gayla Mashu watching the ball game uh, in Oklahoma City. And this, you know, Miss Carl Albert, homecoming well, queen. Gayla's not having as much fun <laughs> as the previous two. We want to wish Gayla well. Of course, yes. just had some surgery on her knee, but was Carl Albert homecoming queen? I still don't I mean Ricky Bobby's a wonderful man, but she could have done so much better <laughs> than him. Uh, we joke. We love Ricky Bobby, one outstanding Hall of Fame football coach here in, in Blue Jay land, but Wish you well, Miss Mishu. Want you to get better right away. We miss you. Of course, our good friend Chris Talbot listening as well down there, I think, in Pittsburgh County. Here's the kickoff left to right after the penalty. Dropped and picked up at the 15 on the far side to the 20. And up near the 24-yard line, I believe that was Marcellus Owens on the return. And so here comes the Guthrie offense. And uh, for the second time, hopefully the second time's a charm like it was for the Carl Albert offense. As Guthrie was unable to move the chains on their opening drive. Had a nice couple of plays, just couldn't execute for, the, for that first down. Well, we've got to definitely get something going here. And, and I would expect, you know, I think you'll probably see Coach Mick go back to the run, set some things up. Eventually you're going to see him go to number three, Marcel Sonnen. At some point. Marcellus in the slide here with four receiver set. First down and ten. Jackson, play action, trying to run with it on the right side. Actually loses a yard. Maybe two. Yeah, about a yard, yard and a half. And so second down and eleven. Guthrie trying to find their identity off on offense here in the first ten, ten or so plays. Also want to say a big hello to Dustin Bowman watching back over in Edmond. Appreciate listening to the broadcast. Dustin's probably uh, on duty tonight. Could be. Proud firefighter of Edmond, Oklahoma. Outstanding football player for the Jays. Second down 11 from the 23-yard line. Four receiver set. Jackson rolls to the near side looking. Here's the pressure. And he's going to try to step up and not going to be able to do that. He's going to lose three yards back to the 20-yard line. And all week long, and put me in the crowd there, I was... I kept bringing up the Carl Albert offense against the Guthrie defense. Very, didn't really take a whole lot of look at the Guthrie offense against the Carl Albert defense. Remember, Phil, Carl Albert brings nobody back as far as starters from last year's championship team. Yeah, I think a lot of these kids had playing time last year, but no starters coming back. And bottom line, we're just ge getting beat up front right now and just not having any time to get anything set up. Third down and 14 for this Blue Jay offense back at the 20-yard line. Man in motion left to right is Brody Hinkle. And there's a flag. Will be against our right guard. Moved early. Two penalties, both against Guthrie. The first penalty on the uh, block in the back on the first pump by Carl Albert. Really kind of flipped the field position there a little bit. Now Guthrie back at their own 15 yard line. And so two penalties for Guthrie. Carl Albert with that one penalty on the kickoff. Third down and 19. 
Three receiver set. Jackson Rose to the far side. Comes back. Caught by Talik at the 10. Carl Albert reads it, reads it well, and Talik will not get to the 15-yard line. Maybe back to the 15. No yards on the play. Fourth down and 19 upcoming. Six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Guthrie trailing Carl Albert 7-0. About a worst case scenario on that series, Chris. We've got no positive yards, deep pin deep down back in our end of the field. Really need David to get off a big punt here for the Jays. David will be inside his five yard line. Titans will set up the return man at the 40 yard line. David had a 28 yard punt on his first punt attempt. See what number two does here. It's a good snap. It's a good punt. Line drive punt. Filled it at the 46-yard line. Here comes the return. A dangerous Chris Bills with it, but he's down Campbell. at the 45-yard line. Campbell Leach, jersey number 36 for the Blue Jays, brings him down, but the Titans will have great field possession for the third offensive trip at the Guthrie 45. Yeah, I mean, as we talked about, field position so important in a ball game like this. And Blue Jay offense sputtering right now. Not being able to get much going, so this defense is going to have to bow their necks and get a stop right here. Guthrie, six offensive plays, negative seven yards. Meanwhile, Carl Orr has ran nine offensive plays for a total of 54 yards. Of course, 40 of those coming on the touchdown score on the previous possession. First down and 10 for the Titans from the Guthrie 46 for a receiver set. Shotgun snap to Harris, looks to throw. Here's pressure. Harris sees it, goes down, feeling for Dadrian Taylor. It's incomplete. Herve Williams on the coverage, and that's that was, a, it's good coverage, but I think that's what Carl Albert wanted. They wanted that matchup. Oh, there's no doubt, but I got to tell you something. Turve was step for step for him yep. and did a wonderful job on that. Of course, if the ball had been on, it would have been a completion, but, I mean, Turve had good yep. coverage. I mean, he did a great job, as good a job as you can ask a, a linebacker trying to keep up with the rabbit. Titans now two of eight passing. Second down and ten. For a receiver set, Taylor in the backfield with Ben Harris. Pistol formation. Harris in the middle of the G logo here at Jelsma Stadium. Play action, far side. It's caught at the 43-yard line. Far side, missed tackle. And it's going to be a first down tackle beyond the 35-yard line. Titans will move the chains here. Stops the clock momentarily at 5.37 to play in the first. Blue Jays have made some changes defensively. Looks like C.J. Ward has come in. Marcellus in at that and other Marcellus cornerback now. Both, now both playing corner defensively. Marcellus has been on and off defensively, but uh, obviously you got to get your best out there to try to stop this Carl Albert passing game. We'll see what Coach Beebe does here on first down and 10 for the Titans. Hand off to Taylor on the right side. Cuts it up a little bit. Not much there. He might have got to the 30-yard line, which would be about a two-yard pickup. Second down and eight upcoming. Great job by the defense there. Corral and Taylor. Carl Albert now with zero rushing yards so far. They had negative two before that run there. Just our third rush attempt, though. Five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Carl Albert seven, got three zero. Very early in the ball game, but this, this drive kind of has that feel that the Jays really need to get a stop here, Chris. It's just kind of that feeling in the air. Second down, we'll call it eight. Close to nine, though. Harris caught wide open at the 25-yard line, tackled immediately. Nice tackle there. A couple of Blue Jays in on the tackle. CJ and and Coonfield on the tackle at the. We're going to spot it at the 25-yard line. So about a six-yard pickup. Very manageable upcoming play. Third down. We'll call it three for the Titans. Big third down play here for the Blue Jay defense. Jay's defense has got to start getting a push back, right, Chris? They got to start getting some more penetration in the backfield. Continue to put pressure on Harris, force him to throw before, he's, before he wants to and hopefully get a turnover. Titans break huddle. Eight seconds on the play clock. Wildcat formation, Dadrian Taylor, Blue Jays practices. They've seen this on film. Taylor in the Wildcat takes the snap. He'll roll to the left side, cuts it. One missed tackle, but a couple of Blue Jays able to get him near the first down marker. Might be a little bit short here, and it will be fourth down in about a yard. Good job by the Blue Jay defense. Sniff that right out. Obviously, I think four, definitely four down territory here for yep. the Titans. Ball marked at the 23-yard line. Wildcat formation again. That's going to be Dadrian Taylor, jersey number 16. This snap goes over his head, backpedals, going to try to outrun three or four different Blue Jays, and he breaks one tackle, 
and he's going to get a first down and more. Jay's had him wrapped up for a loss. But he's going to be tackled for about a two-yard pickup. He needed one, gets two, and it was a high snap. Taylor had to reverse his direction and just outran, ran, out broke one tackle, then outran a couple of Blue Jays. Uh, it's that rabbit, right? I mean, yeah. he's got that speed and that quickness, and Hector Goosby had an opportunity to get there, just couldn't get there. I mean, the speed of Taylor's just too good. Titans with the fresh set of downs. Ball marked at the 21-yard line. 3.05 to play first quarter. Carl Edwards 7, Guthrie 0. Titans moving left to right on the radio dial. Offset formation here. Harris keeps it. Another missed tackle in the backfield. The second one, though, will, will get Harris down in around the 20-yard line. Campbell Leach on the tackle on Ben Harris, the quarterback. Hector Gooseby in there again early, Chris, disrupting the play. Angles are so important. When you're playing a team like this that has so much speed in the backfield, if, you don't, if you're not taking proper angles, you're not going to have success. Good coaching matchup, Guthrie Carlbert, as it is every year. Of course, it was so many years with Gary Rose versus Rafe Watkins, and now it's the Mike Corley versus Kelly Beebe. Mike Corley in his second year as the head coach on that Carl Albert sideline. Second down and nine. Another high snap. Harris wants to throw, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. That Dominic. Yeah, Dominic Gooseby again. That's the second or third batted ball down at the line of scrimmage. So here, here we go again. Another third down play. Third down and nine. Titans have gone through the air, and they have had success through the year on third down. I guess why you see some of the more experienced kids out there right now in the defensive backfield for the Jays just for this type of situation. Carl Albert, two of four on third down tries. Guthrie on third down tries, 0 and 3. First things first, though, defensively. Ball's at the 20, third down and nine. Titans need the 11 yard line. Harris with two backs in the backfield, one to his left, one to his right. Now, man in motion, right to left, that's Vils. They play action, looking to throw. Center of the field, and it is in the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, Titans. On the Touchdown reception of 20 yards, number 15, again, Anthony Davis. It looked like C.J. was there. I think he just couldn't get up to the ball, but he looked like he was there in coverage. Perfect pass by Harris. Great was, reception. Was perfect pass. Heading on for the PAT. Titans trying to make it a 14-0 ball game. 2.02 to play in the first quarter. Snap hold the kick. Barely gets over, but it does go through for Eddie, and the Titans have a two-touchdown lead. 14-0 on two passing plays for touchdowns. Timeout from Jelsma. This is Guthrie Blue Jay Football on Hot 93.7 FM, KSBI. At Terra Insure Group, you'll be helped by lifelong Blue Jay fans, Jason Herzl, Dennis Oaks, and Seth Robbins. They aren't limited to any single provider. They'll work with you to find the carrier and the plan that fits you best. Terra Insure Group is an independent insurance agency specializing in home, auto, and commercial lines of insurance. Call Terra Insure Group at 293-4880 or stop by at 2403 South Division or visit them online at TIGOK.com. Terra Insure Group, insuring your your world. When it comes to Guthrie Blue Jay Athletics, Hayes Funeral Home is a proud supporter from the first game all the way to the championship game. Along with many years of experience in funeral service, the Hayes family brings compassion and professional service during difficult times. Owners Chuck and Lynette Hayes take pride in providing families and their loved ones quality care. Chuck and Lynette have not only supported families in the Guthrie area for countless years, but have supported Guthrie student athletes succeeding on the playing field and in the classroom. Hayes Funeral Home is located on the corner of Noble and Wentz, or simply give them a call at 405 282 3100. Back on the scoreboard. Anthony Davis back in the end zone. Carl Albert Titans, nine plays, 46 yards, 20 yard touchdown pass from Harris to Davis. Two minutes and two seconds left here in the first quarter. Titans kick off. Here's a return from the 10 yard line. CJ Ward gets the 20. Back pedals and will be down in around the 20 yard line. That's scoring summary brought to you by John Vance Motors, where it's comfortable to buy a car. Well, Chris, Blue Jays have got to get something going on this offensive series here. You can, there's no way Blue Jays can afford to go down, not get some points on the board here, at least flip the field. This is a critical, critical offensive series for the Blue Jays. First down, 10. 
for the Blue Jays who huddle up, make their way to the 20 yard line. Blue Jays have had a hard time passing. Blue Jays have had a hard time running the football so far. See what happens on this offensive possession here. And I think Guthrie had to take a timeout. Yeah. They did. I don't think they had the right, uh, didn't get to the line real quick. So with that, we'll take another timeout with 154 to play in the first quarter. Call over 14, Guthrie 0. This is Blue Jay football. Sonic has every slush flavor someone could ever want. This is basically slush headquarters. For sour blue raspberry plans world domination. Well, not if Lemonberry has anything to say about it. Oh, Lemonberry, you're already sour. Come to the sour side. Never. I'll never join you. Refreshment just got colorful with new slush flavors like blue raspberry made with nerds candy. And start your day with the 99 cent morning drink stop. Sonic at I-35 at Highway 33. This is how you Sonic. What a great time of year. Blue Jay football. Tailgating, bands, fans cheering, and the excitement that comes with America's favorite sport. At John Vance Auto Group in Guthrie, we're excited about our huge selection of new Fords, GMC, Cadillac, Buick, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Each competitively priced and with a free lifetime powertrain guarantee. Come see us or shop us at VanceAutoGroup.com. John Vance Auto Group, it's all true. I-35, exit 153 in Guthrie. John Vance Auto Group. Back to action here in the first quarter of Blue Jay football. First down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Jackson Waddell will keep this one in the end. Not much there, Phil. One yard pickup, and this got through offense trying to find something. Had, you know, an extra player in, in, in the backfield, a couple lead blockers, and still nothing there. Well, I'm telling you, the offensive line has got to establish something up front right now that they can't give them time to throw they can't they can't get any lanes open to run i mean that offensive line is going to have to change what's going on or it's going to be a long long night for the blue jays been told the the strongest point of this carlover defense is the is the defensive line as guthrie tries to run it again and maybe back to the line of scrimmage maybe a half yard and and uh, you look at guthrie nine plays and negative four yards uh, yeah. excuse me about negative three yards Seven plays officially for Guthrie. Negative five yards, I think, is what we have so far in this one. I think, unfortunately, this third and long might be the shortest third down conversion opportunity we've had so far tonight. Third down and eight. Balls at the 22-yard line. Blue Jays trying to get positive yards, trying to get at least eight or nine for a first down. It'd be the first first down of the night if they can execute. Waddell has time to throw, goes to the far sideline, and it's intercepted at the 35-yard line. Jackson just kind of threw that one into triple coverage. Two Titans fought, fought over the interception before one coming down. It's first down 10 Titans at the 35, and that's just trying to make something happen when it's not there. Again, worst-case scenario for the Blue Jays. Turn it over. Titans take over on Blue Jays 35-yard line. This one's going to get out of hand early, Chris, if we don't get something established. On the interception for the Titans was Reese Collier, 5'11", 185-pound junior. And here the Titans set up camp in Guthrie territory, 35 officially on the far hash mark. Hand off to Taylor, up the middle, spins out of the way to the right, gets a couple of yards, not much there, but does pick up three. Second down, seven upcoming. 24 seconds to play in the first quarter. Titans do not have to take a snap if they don't want to to end this first quarter. Titans in no big hurry here. Looks like they will be content with this 14-0 lead to end the first quarter, but we'll have the football to begin the second quarter. They do break huddle with three seconds, down to two seconds, and they will not get close. That's the end of the first quarter. Titans with two touchdown passes, and that by Anthony Davis on the receiving end, have a 14-0 lead over the Blue Jays. Timeout. This is Guthrie, Blue Jay football. Sometimes you need immediate care and can't get in to see your doctor during regular hours. With Mercy Convenient Care in Guthrie, you can walk in without an appointment and get the medical attention you need at a lower cost and with shorter waiting time than your local emergency room. The Mercy Convenient Care is located at 2919 South Division. For any concerns, call 405-282-6301. Services are provided by Mercy Hospital, Logan County. Choose Guthrie. Choose Mercy. I'm Brian Sterkle with Interbank. 
You can bank on Guthrie's home team, the banking professionals at Interbank. Our decision makers and the people who serve you work closely together to provide responsible service and personal attention. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing our friends in Guthrie and the surrounding communities at the Blue Jay football games. We're located at 224 East Oklahoma, or you can reach us by phone at 282-0470. Interbank, in it for you. Member FDIC. Carl Albert Titans with a 14-0 lead as we get set for second quarter action. Braden Russell on the camera. Craig Fleck with stats. Aaron Ryburn producing everything in front of us here. Phil Nichols to my right. I'm Chris Evans. Glad to have you on board. Hot 93.7 FM KSBI. Also streaming worldwide on Guthrie News page and Guthrie Sports page, which are with our video feed as we get a good look there at the high school band across the way. Titans will have the football now moving right to left on the radio dial. It'll be second down and eight. Ball is in the middle of the field, placed at the 33-yard line as Carl Albert makes their way toward the rock. Three, excuse me, four receiver set. Twins to each side. Offset pistol formation. Harris wants to throw. It's caught inside the 30 to the 25. Down near the 20, inside the 20, down at the 19-yard line. And the Titans will move the chains as they have gone through the air early and often in this ball game. Well, as far as throwing the ball, everything they're trying is working right now, Chris. The Blue Jays have done a pretty good job against the run. Just haven't been able to get any real pressure on Harris, the sophomore quarterback for the Titans. Bills with the reception for Carl Albert. First down and 10 at the Guthrie 19-yard line. Already on top, 14-0. 20 seconds gone by here in the second. Harris takes a snap, but there's flags on the far side. Looks like it will be the second penalty of the night against Carl Albert with a false start. Carl Albert, Phil unofficially 20 ran plays tonight. 116 yards of offense. That's almost six yards per play for the Titans. Most of that through the air as we've talked. Yeah, you're right, Phil. Seven rushing attempts for only six yards for Carl Albert. Guthrie, six rushing attempts for negative four yards. First down and 15. Now ball placed at the 24-yard line. One receiver each side, a couple tight ends in there. A little option play with Harris and Taylor. Taylor gets the option. Not much as he's driven out of bounds on that far sideline from the Carl Albert coaches, and it'll bring up second down. And we'll call it about 13. Make J.D. Coonfield on the tackle there again. J.D.'s had a heck of a heck of a season himself, doing a wonderful job. It's a safety position. James Daniel. James Daniel. What a great name. Yeah. James Daniel. Altus leads Lot MacArthur in the second quarter, 14 to 7. That game in the Rock. There's another Rock, you know. They call that in Altus. Second down and 13, handoff to Taylor. He fumbles the football, jumps on it. It's still loose, so the Blue Jays trying to get their 24th turnover. I think Taylor was able to jump on it. No official word yet from the official. I thought Taylor was on there, but they're still searching and digging in there, and it will be Taylor back on the football. Missed opportunity there for the Jays. Ball's on the turf. and Need to make those plays in a game like this. Definitely in a time like this when your back's up against the wall defensively. Guyman has made the trip to Piedmont. Whew. Piedmont leads that one 13-0. That's a short drive for Guyman. Yeah, short drive. It's almost like a home game. Of course, McGinnis won last night over Northwest Class. And third down and 17 for the Titans. Back to the air, the upcoming four receivers. Harris looks to throw. Here's pressure. He has to get rid of it again. And it's incomplete at the 15-yard line. The intended receiver was Chris Bells as Harris threw a great pass, but threw it maybe a little bit faster than he wanted to thanks to that pressure by the Guthrie defense. Dominic Gooseby, senior Dominic Gooseby, in there putting the pressure on number 12, Ben Harris. That's what, you, you know, that's what we're going to have to have if we want to have any chance of slowing down this, this Titan passing game. We've got to get pressure on Harris, force him to throw the ball before he's ready to. And as I've said, hopefully create some turnovers. Titans need just about the nine-yard line. They'll keep the offense on the field here for fourth down. We'll call it 17 at the Guthrie 26-yard line. Harris from the gun. Blue Jays five-man front come. Here's a delayed blitz. Throwing up into the end zone, looking for Anthony Davis, and it's 
And complete double coverage. Nice job there. As the safety came over for help, C.J. Ward on the coverage as well. And see if that's a spark for Guthrie here as they turn Carl Albert over on downs. Well, the Blue Jays needed that burst of energy. Now the offense has got to get something going. Look for Coach Mick maybe to try to open some things up. Of course, you can't do a whole lot if you're running for your life back here, Chris. Got to get some time to execute your offensive plays. Stillwater Pioneers trailing Lawton in Lawton in the second quarter. 7-0. Pioneers off to a great 6-0 start on the year. Deer Creek trails Midwest City at, in the second quarter, 7-6. First down to 10. Two receivers on the near side. Jackson has time. He wants it all, and he's going to throw it into a Carl Albertine. You can see that forming the entire way. It's intercepted at the 30-yard line, and now there's an injured player there, and the Carl Albert, nope. It looked like he was waving for medical attention, but the player is okay, but it is an interception. Jackson intercepted for the second time tonight. And the Titans will have the football once again. And we will, I'm sure Craig will work on the time of possession of this first half. Carl Alberts had the ball the entire first half. And we still got 10-21 to play till halftime. Muskogee, 7-0 lead over Shawnee. Booker T. Washington with a 7-3 lead over Sepulpa. Some 6-8-2 scores. Bixby shutting out Bar Bartlesville in the second quarter, 16-0. Of course, Chautau won last night over PC West. First down and 10 for the Carl Albert Titans from the 26-yard line. They'll hand it off to Taylor. He stretches out on the far side and didn't get much there. They got their defense pretty stingy on Taylor right now. Gooseby on the tackle. I believe that was Hector Gooseby on the tackle. Pick up of two yards. They bring up second down and eight as we go. About to go under 10 minutes of play here in the second quarter. Carl Albert with a 14-0 lead with two passing touchdowns to Anthony Davis. Of course, I think Chris talking about that Stillwater game. I think without the services of outstanding tailback, um, is it Quantrell? Quantrell. Quantrell Walker yeah. serving a suspension. Tines to the line of scrimmage. Second down and eight from the Carl Albert 28-yard line. Harris, quick pass, caught behind the line of scrimmage. And then a couple missed tackles out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Pick up a three or four yards, and the Titans will have another third down chance here. Goosby on the tackle. Night old find rolling here until the Golden Chick Halftime Show. Be sure to stay tuned. Golden Chick Halftime Show will have FFA Director Clay Drake come in and talk about the good things happening with that department. Got a Gator up for grabs. Annual pork chop dinner. We'll talk about that. Third down and four for the Titans. I'll hand it off on the right side. That Taylor looks like Taylor as he goes across the first down marker. And Carl will have a fresh set of downs. Taylor doing what Taylor does. Makes a guy miss. Pops it outside. Next thing you know, he's eight, nine yards down the field. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line of the Carl Albert Titans. Blue Jays need a spark of somehow a turnover. Again, they've had 23 of them, but you really can't depend on turnovers, but you're certainly looking for one here. You know Carl Albert preached and preached and preached about ball security yep. this entire week. They see the numbers. Titans to the line of scrimmage, first down in 10. Two receivers to the near side. Harris, back to the ground game with Dadrian Taylor dancing on the right side. Not much there. Ball, loose ball looks couple, like. A couple of yards at most for Taylor. And it'll be second down in eight. Been a quiet home sideline tonight for Guthrie fans. Not a whole lot to cheer for. Defense trying to keep Guthrie in this one, though. It's one of those ball games, Chris, where you've got to force turnovers. You know, I think we knew that coming into it. The Jays were going to need to do some things to give themselves an opportunity to, to win the ball game. And thus far, just everything that could go wrong has for the Blue Jays on offense. Titans break huddle. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. On second down and eight from the 42, Taylor in the offset pistol formation. The option, nope. 
Harris is going to keep it. And then options at the last second. Taylor across the 45. Tackled by a few Blue Jays near midfield, near first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. It'll depend on the spot if it's a first down or not. Blue Jays will be on the road next week when they travel to Oklahoma City, take on Northwest Class, and that's a Thursday night game. Many games will be next week will be on Thursday due to fall break. Kiddos will be out of school. Of course, Northwest Class is sandwiched right in between Carl Everett and McGinnis for this Guthrie Ball Club. Pickup was just shy of the first down, so we'll call it third down and one from the 49. Titans need midfield. Taylor up the middle. He has the first down in the Guthrie territory and down at the 48-yard line. A pickup of three yards. As we see Carl Albert with a 14-0 lead, taking the air out of the ball a little bit more here with the running game as the uh, Titans have now rushed it 14 times for, for about 25 yards. Defense been on the field. It well, feels like it's all night. Got the... Blue Jay offense really able to get anything going. I think still waiting for our first down on offense, aren't we, Chris? Uh, let's see. We've got three. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Carl Albert has seven first downs. Excuse me, I think that's eight first downs now. Guthrie with zero first downs. First down and ten for the Titans now in Guthrie territory at the 48-yard line. Play action, Harris going downfield once again, and it's incomplete. Nice coverage there by C.J. Ward as Harris tried to find Chris Bells, and that was great coverage downfield. Great job by senior C.J. Ward and Marcellus Owens rotating, rotating over on top as well. Great pressure on that as well by Campbell Leach. Clock stop after the incomplete pass at the 6.36 mark. Again, Titans with a 14-0 lead over Guthrie. Carl Everett had two passing scores in that first quarter. Moving right to left on your radio dial. Here on this cooler Friday night. Started off in the upper 50s. Harris wants to throw here on third down. Screen caught at midfield, 45 to the 40, to the 35, cutting. And finally being hauled down in around the 32-yard line. It's that guy again in Anthony Davis. Just seems like every year, Chris, CA kind of reloads. Got new skill kids, right? <laughs> yeah. Again, you look at the last two years, Carl Everett has really controlled this series. Outscoring got to be 100 to 17 on the scoreboard. Make that 114 right now to 17. So we've got time. Just Blue Jays need that spark here. Nice drive here by the Titans, though. 6.06 to play until halftime. Man in motion right to left is Bills. They'll give it to him on the little jet play. And he's tackled at the 33. No pick up there. It'll bring up second down and 10. We see maybe a little wet surface there make the first tackle. Yeah, went to make his cut back. Cade Whitfield in good position to make the play. Got the assist there by the wet turf. Got a great audience on our video feed once again. And we appreciate everyone tuning us in. And we'll be back video feed next week and the week after and all that good stuff. So we appreciate you tuning us in here. Good home crowd. Yeah, man, there's, I don't think there's much of a seat to be found on either the home side or the visitor side. Second down and 10. Little play action here. Harris wants to throw. Goes to the far sideline. It's caught at the 20. Oh, dropped at the 20-yard line. Blue Jay defender also slipped at the 15. A couple players slipping. And it results in an incomplete pass. Would have been plenty for a first down. Blue Jays dodge a bullet there. They'll bring up third down in 10. Marcellus lost his footing, yeah. as you said, Chris. Went down and wide open. That's a completion. That's probably six for the Titans. Clock stop, 5-19. Got their defense trying to stop them again. Carl Albert's been pretty good, though, on third down tries. This one coming from the... Guthrie, 33-yard line. Harris with four receivers. Comes to the near side, and it's dropped at the 20-yard line. Should have been caught. If, if brought in, it would have been a first down, but the pass is incomplete. And now you look at Carl Albert now, five of nine on third down tries. And I'm sure they'll stay on the field for a fourth down try here. On fourth down, they're one for two so far. And actually, I say that, they're going to play field position and bring in the punt team. This is a good place perhaps to fake a punt. Or pin the Guthrie offense, who has not been yeah. able to do anything yeah. tonight. Yeah. 
really. I think they can do about Many anything options. they want right yeah. here based on what they their defense has been able to do to the Blue Jays. Absolutely. 5.15 on the game clock. Harris, the punter, he's also, again, the quarterback, so you always got to watch that. It's a good snap, and he will try to pin this one inside the 10. Bounces at the 12, takes a great tight bounce inside the 5, and wow. they will let that go as far as it will, and it goes just shy of the goal line. So Guthrie will have their backs to the goal line, or to the end zone, excuse me, with 5.05 to play till halftime. Titans on top, 14 to 0. And you see a lot of the, the defense coming over with their heads down. And look a little bit gassed. They've been out there, seems like, the entire first half. We'll see the offense try to get their first first down. I mean, you've got you to win the small things, right? You've got to get your first first down of the night. Yeah, I mean, we've got to, you know, get out of the first half down 14-0 is a victory at this point in the game for the Blue Jays. So yeah. control the ball here. We got a timeout on the field. What do we got going on? Guthrie is in the huddle. Is it official? I don't want to take a timeout if it's not official timeout. Oh, okay. It is official timeout, so we will take a timeout as well. Carl Albert with a 14-0 lead, 5.05 to play till halftime. This is Guthrie Blue Jay Football. It's a beautiful day to introduce people to the golden goodness of Golden Chick. So this is your first time you've had Golden Chick. What do you think? Absolutely delicious. These are 100% tenderloin, no mystery meat. I love them. They're oh, so okay. juicy and tender. How long do you think it takes to marinate a perfect piece of chicken? Probably 20 minutes. Yeah, about 20. An hour? What if I told you 24 hours? Wow. I feel like one of those infomercial guys. But wait, there's more time marinating the chicken. One taste and you're golden. Okay. Hello, Blue Jay family. I'm Pastor Hetty. I want to invite you to North Church Guthrie, where you can expect fun, Bible-centered kids and student ministries, life-giving groups, engaging worship, and powerful messages. I would love to see you and your family at North Church Guthrie this Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. at Guthrie Upper Elementary School, where our vision is to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. And remember, God loves you and go win. Blue Jays on first down, get out across a five-yard line. Jackson Waddell on the left side gives the Blue Jays a little bit of breathing room. Second down and five from the six-yard line. 438, 437 to go until halftime. And, Phil, you, again, you're still looking for that first down, but you're also, as we have a flag thrown here, and I think the one of the receivers jumped the gun here, so that's going to go half the distance. But uh, obviously you're looking for your first down, but you're also looking to protect the ball and trying to maybe take some time off the clock to allow, if you do have to punt, Carl Albert, very little time to work offensively. Uh, just everything's out of sync offensively right now for the Jays, making mental mistakes, jumping. Offensive line hasn't established any kind of control up front whatsoever up to this point. And, you know, as you said, we got to take that first step. Get that first down is a, is a big-time victory right now at this point in the ballgame. But primarily, going down 14-0 at half would be a big, uh, would be good for the Jays. Crawford has three timeouts. We'll see if they utilize it here, if they can get a stop on second down at eight. Jackson simply just runs on their left side, has an angle across the 10, and out of bounds around the 15-yard line. And the Blue Jays have their first first down of the night. Hopefully that'll be something to get the Blue Jays a little confidence. As you hear Dennis Oaks, the PA announcer, getting to say first down and 10 for the first time tonight for the home crowd. Jackson run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That's why Carver didn't spend the time out on first down, wanting to see what happens after second down. Blue Jays to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers. Jackson sends one in the motion. That's Marcells from left to right. Jackson rolls to the right side, tucks it. One guy misses, second, third, and fourth guy will not miss. Here's a flag thrown, might, might be have. in the area of a face mask. Yeah. It's usually where that comes. Guth Guthrie, 13 yards of offense on 12 plays. It is a face mask against Carl Alberts. Five yard sort, looks like. Blue Jays will take any yards they can get right now. Yeah. Carl Albert with their third penalty of the night. Guthrie also with three penalties. Titans have 15 yards in penalties and Guthrie with 18 yards. So the ball will be marked at the, we'll call it the 16 yard line. Clock rolling, four minutes to play until halftime. Blue Jays tied in on the left, tied in on the right. Jackson takes the shotgun snap again, rolling on the left side, comes up the middle and 
not much there, and it's just a, about a one-yard pickup. And so Guthrie will be facing a third down and seven, and just Blue Jays can't get anything on the edge, can't get anything up the middle. It's just uh, it's and primarily it's been all Jackson Waddell trying to run the football. He's thrown two interceptions in this game as well. So as you said, Phil, there's just I mean, <laughs> there's nothing going yeah. our way right now, and I mean it's it's you got to create your own opportunities, and that all starts up front. And I know I keep saying that, and I I know the folks are probably saying, boy, Nichols being awful hard on the kids up front but that's exactly what we've got to do we've got to establish something up front the best the best play for Guthrie offensively was a draw pass on their right. opening drive that could have gone for a big play second down and seven from the 17 Jackson a couple again a couple tight ends in there Titans obviously load the box here Jackson cuts it up just trying to protect the football he's down at the 24 another face mask. and uh, there's another flag down clock stops and we'll check this penalty with 256 to go again Looks like it's going to be another face mask on Carl Albert again. And if you're Guthrie, you're just trying to take some of this time off the time off the clock here. And Guthrie, I think this is going to be a 15 yard, so this is going to be their second first down of this one. This one comes on the penalty, but you're under three minutes. Of course, plenty of time for Carl Albert, but trying to get keep the Titans offense off the field the rest of this first half. I mean, you know, as crazy as it sounds, this is the most success the offense have had all night, and much of that coming in the form of penalties. You know, at this point, Chris, if we could flip the flip field, and even if we had to punt the ball, pin him down deep, get out of this first half down 14-0, that'd be great for the Jays. Ball marked at the 35 after the penalty. Two receivers to the far side. Blue Jays likely keep this on the ground. And it off to CJ, his first carry. He's moving to his left, still moving to his left, cuts it up. Now trying to go backwards to reverse his field, and he does. It's a loss of two on the play. Second down and 12 with two and a half minutes to go in the ball game, in the first half, excuse me. Again, stay tuned. Golden Chick Halftime Show. We'll have Clay Drake up here at the FFA, Guthrie High School. And we'll also have first half stats. Take a look at some of the scores from the state of Oklahoma in 6A, 5A football. 210, 209 to play in the first half. We'll call it second down and 11. Surprised to see if Carl Albert might try to start using some timeouts here to save some time for their offense. Waddell rolls to the near side. Nothing there, so he'll take off on foot. He gets to the 40, down at the 40-yard line. Pickup of six yards. So Guthrie will have a very manageable third down and five play. Clock is rolling as Carl Albert does not spend a timeout. 142, 141 until half. Ball sandwiched in between the 45 and 46 yard line. Again, Blue Jays huddle, no hurry here. Again, the, the goal here is just take time off the clock. Obviously you want to score, but the goal is take time off the clock and don't let Carl Albert score again and get in the locker room and readjust. Third down and five from the 40. A little reverse from CJ to Marcellus. Marcellus wants to throw it. Nope, now he's going to take off from right. Gets the midfield to the 45 and out of bounds at the 40 yard line. And now Jackson Waddell slow to get up. He's up now, but it was kind of looking for something offensively. It's something of a trick play to kind of get going. That's the first time that we see that. And he gets it into Carl Albert territory with a minute 10. So now, now you start looking at some things, try to maybe get in field goal range with oh. David Vargas, who has a season-high 37-yard field goal. David Disson definitely has the leg to hit from long distance, Chris. And we just That'd be big time if the Blue Jays could put something on the board going in at halftime. Marcellus pushed out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Two receivers to the far side. Khalid Jackson, the tight end on the right side. Brody in the motion, left to right. They'll hand it off to CJ up the middle, and he'll get to the 35-yard line. Just a four-yard pickup as we hit 102, 101 to go to a halftime. So he taking a couple of shots downfield. They'll get some more time off the clock before they do that. <laughs> Second down and seven. All on the near hash mark of the 36-yard line. Jackson hands the CJ another reverse here. Marcellus, Carl Everett not fooled this time. Nice tackle there by number 22, David Peters, as he saw that one. Forming once again, Guthrie hit back for a loss. 34 seconds, a timeout taken by the Blue Jays. We will 
take a timeout with them. 34 seconds to play in the first half. Carl over 14, Guthrie 0. This is Blue Jay football. Have you heard the big news here in Guthrie? You know the Guthrie Tag Agency is your local source for all your vehicles, boats, ATVs, trailers, titles, registrations, and of course, driver's license renewals and replacements. But now, the Guthrie Tag Agency helps with driver's road tests. That's right. Take your road test right here in Guthrie. No more trips to Edmond or Stillwater or Enid. Call and schedule your appointment at 282-3873. Guthrie Tag Agency, open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and on Saturdays from 9 to noon. FM Bank is a neighborhood bank with eight branches and 17 ATM locations across four counties in central Oklahoma. FM Bank can help you with all of your personal, business, and agricultural banking needs, or simply add efficiency to your business. Check out FM Bank with online and mobile banking at www.fmbankok.com or download their app and have all of their services in the palm of your hand. FM Bank is a neighbor you can count on. FM Bank, member FDIC. Brady Russell, Craig Fleck, Aaron Ryburn, Phil Nichols, Chris Evans with you here. Hot 93.7 FM KSBI for our North Central radio audience. Also streaming worldwide on our Guthrie News page YouTube feed. Appreciate a good audience on there tonight. Resuming action here, third down and 10 for the Blue Jays. Coming from the Carl Albert 39-yard line. Again, only 34 seconds left in this first half. Guthrie trails by two touchdowns. Jackson in the shotgun. He'll roll to the near side. Has time. Comes near sideline. It's tipped by the Carl Albert defender at the 30. Goes out of bounds. Incomplete. Nice job there by JV and Hunt. They get a hand on that one and it goes out of bounds. And the Blue Jays now looking at fourth down in 10. 30 seconds to play in the second quarter. It's kind of a tweener right here, Chris. You're obviously too far out to try anything with David Vargas. 30 seconds, fourth down. What see, do you do? I, I think the best, maybe best option here that you haven't seen yet, we'll see here as Talik Jackson does line up at the receiver on the far side. I think maybe trying to find him at the tight end spot. We'll see. Four receiver set, fourth down and 10 from the Titan 39. Jackson again has time, comes to the near side. It's incomplete as Jackson threw it toward the sideline and Marcellus went toward the middle of the field. It's incomplete. And Carl Everett will take over first down and 10 with only 26 seconds left here. Obviously, he can't rest on defense in these final 26 seconds, especially if it's a simple handoff to Dazier and Taylor. He can go to the house at any given time, so you can't rest here. And hopefully, you get into the locker room only down two touchdowns, 14 0. It feels like 56 to 0, got to be honest with it you. It really does. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's just 14 0. And, you know, this is, this is scary for me. And 26 seconds left. They have guys that can break it. We've seen Titans go downfield several times tonight. Anthony Davis has done that yep. with a couple touchdown receptions. Got to watch Chris Fields, number four for the Titans. He can, he can get open as well, but looks like the Titans might take a knee here. The two halfbacks in the pistol formation. Dadrian Taylor backs up, and Harris will take the knee, and we will go into the locker room. Again, it feels like a blowout on the stats and on the field. It does feel that way, but... Blue Jays only will trail the Carl Albert Times by a halftime score of 14 to 0. Maybe there's some magic in that Blue Jay halftime locker room to come out in the second half. Well, Blue Jays get the ball to start the second half, go in and make some adjustments, try to get some points on the board. Something's got to change, though. Defense has been out there, it seemed like, all the first half. So we will see what Kelly BB and the coaching staff can dial up. Halftime score, Carl Albert 14, Guthrie 0. Take a timeout, come back. It's the Golden Chick halftime show. This is Guthrie Blue Jay Football on Hot 93.7 FM, KSBI. Glenda here with Jim and our Red River Roofing crew. You've known us for 16 years of quality roofing services, and we are also proud installers of Diamond Coat Pre-Finished Siding. This quality wood siding product is scratch resistant, comes in custom color options, and will actually increase your home's resale value. With a 30-year no-fade warranty, this siding is sure to impress. Durability is number one, so choose a stylish exterior siding that will last. Call today to boost your home's curb appeal with beautiful Diamond Coat Siding. Visit us at redriverroofing.com. 
Mike has every slush flavor someone could ever want. This is basically slush headquarters. Where sour blue raspberry plans world domination. Well, not if Lemonberry has anything to say about it. Oh, Lemonberry, you're already sour. Come to the sour side. Never. I'll never join you. Refreshment just got colorful with new slush flavors like blue raspberry made with Nerds Candy. And start your day with the 99 cent morning drink stop. Sonic at I-35 at Highway 33. This is how you Sonic. When garage door problems occur, don't call a kind of service company or maybe a repair guy. Call Paul Creed at A-Team Overhead Door. Paul owns and operates his company and has over 15 years of experience in residential and commercial overhead door service. Paul provides all garage door services from repairs to installations. With free estimates, Paul will work with you to decide the best possible solution for your garage door or opener problems. Call A-Team Overhead Door today, 405-642-7065. This is Craig Fleck. Stay tuned after the break. Phil Nichols will join me for first half stats and more on the Golden Chick Halftime Show. I'm Brian Sterkle with Interbank. You can bank on Guthrie's home team, the banking professionals at Interbank. Our decision makers and the people who serve you work closely together to provide responsible service and personal attention. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing our friends in Guthrie and the surrounding communities at the Blue Jay football games. We're located at 224 East Oklahoma, or you can reach us by phone at 282-0470. Interbank, in it for you. Member FDIC. And we welcome you inside the Golden Chick Halftime Show here in beautiful Gelsma Stadium in historic downtown Guthrie on this Friday night. It is the game of the week in the state of Oklahoma. Many have come, the home side, the visitor side, the press box. Everything is full here inside Gelsma Stadium as the crowd saw a first half domination by the Carl Albert Titans. Guthrie only down 14-0. It feels like a whole lot more than that. And we'll have first-half stats and numbers and the scoring summaries and all that good stuff coming up here in just a little bit. But at the time, I want to bring in our, our good friend, Clay Drake, at the high school FFA director, all that good stuff up there. And uh, Clay, uh, uh, Clay, it's always good to see you. And uh, a lot of great things happen at, uh, at the high school. Boy, there is. It, it's good to be on here. It's, I mean, it's Great Friday night, football weather, you can't beat that. Good, cool temperatures finally come our way, and good Lord kind of left on the rain, so that's always a good thing. We need a little bit of dry spell, but we've been kind of getting ready. You know, next week, next Friday is our well, big. Real, real quick, everyone's tuning in. Well, that voice sounds familiar, of course, Clay Drake, the big voice <laughs> in, in high school wrestling. You go to the state tournament, that is that is the voice you hear in uh, the Gary tournament. You kind of get to uh, get to all the big wrestling tournaments and get to uh, do those. Those are always cool, and it's always, uh, always fun to hear you. So, uh, I can't even be the best voice in, in the stadium tonight because Clay's here, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, those, those, are, those are always job. fun. Those are always fun events. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get to go back to, to Reno, Nevada again. And, and oh, look at now he's big time. There. There. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know about that. <laughs> Northwest Classic yeah. next week. <laughs> <laughs> Northwest Classic. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, it, I mean, like I said, you, you can't beat those fun moments like that. And, and, again, the great athletics we have here, it's always fun to be able to call those as well, yep. too. So. Of course, Clay, you guys do a fabulous job with the Guthrie FFA and, and really a, a, a very, very strong tradition in Guthrie. You guys, I think, have came back in the last several years and really reestablished that and taken it to a different level. Talk a little bit about what your kiddos have going on. And Well, we've been, we just came off Tulsa State Fair, Oklahoma State Fair and Tulsa State Fair both. And at Oklahoma State Fair had a young man named Jacob Sanderson had the grand champion doe, breeding doe, which is awesome. It's his senior year, so I was thrilled to death that young man to go out on a high like that and uh, Tulsa State Fair we had several kids place you know second third first kind of all over the board and you know Tulsa is always a little tougher competition you get over there on the eastern side of the state and, and they have good quality livestock and good quality people as well and so we've been pretty busy lining up you know kind of getting wrapped up from that deal and kind of getting geared towards the, the winter months and everything we've got going on we've got a good strong group of about 200 kids in ag this year so um, all of them are very gung-ho. It's been kind of exciting kind of get that enthusiasm back in there, kind of. I'm not real sure. I've, I've only been in school about nine days, unfortunately, yeah. so I'm trying to kind of get myself acclimated back in. Yeah. But And uh, so it's been a lot of fun just doing all that as well. And your facilities, I mean, they continue to get better and yeah. better. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we built the, the new hog barn, new sheep barn, sheep goat barn, and, and we're at capacity on both those buildings. So yeah. that's a great thing to have um, this year. 
especially along just on, on showing sheep. We've had a ton of kids step up and say, hey, I want to try that. So we're currently beating the streets trying to find some more lambs to fill the barns up. That's how, of course, I read recently an article Chris did that the you guys received a very generous donation recently to expand some of your other programs. We did. We are, we're actually working to expand on our horticulture program to build a new greenhouse and, and kind of it's a twofold deal of we're going to have hydroponics and then we're going to also put aquaculture in there we know we've got a lot of kids who the livestock route necessarily isn't is their way and but they love the horticulture side and so the the world of hydroponics growing plants with water is, is really expanding and all the kind of if you look at a lot of third world countries they're really expanding their resources into that way to grow a lot of your major cities are putting in hydroponics gardens and, and old abandoned warehouses to um, produce fresh produce and so that's kind of a neat deal we can teach kids and, and let them go out and have an opportunity to do some great things after high school even I saw a special on that on somewhere I Detroit's doing a lot of that I believe Detroit do that does that it was kind of neat last year when we were at National Convention in Indianapolis I was visiting with a young man we were in their restaurant and they buy directly from a, a warehouse that services six blocks all the restaurants and then six blocks that warehouse they, awesome. they bring in fresh produce and that's so awesome. That was kind of a neat deal to, you know, let the kids kind of hear about, you know, here's urban agriculture at its finest, you know, and it's agriculture still, you know, and so let kids know, hey, after high school, there's lots of opportunities for you to go do and be part of, and, you know, and it pays well. Speaking with Clay Drake, FFA director at Guthrie High School, Phil Nichols, Chris Evans with you. It is the Golden Chick Halftime Show. Blue Jays trail to the number one and two-time defending state champion, Carl Albert Titans, 14-0. Our radio audience, that's the Carl Albert High School Marching Band performing on the field of Jell's Mustang. Of course, our video feed shows that as well. And, uh, Clay, it's one of the biggest events of the year. And uh, there's been a little little slight uh, change to that because that's a good thing. That's it's a, a good thing. thing. But uh, I saw a little green thing outside. That's uh, It makes another appearance this year. It makes another appearance. It's, it's the famous Gator Raffle. Um, you know, we only sell 800 tickets on this deal and uh, $25 a ticket and gives a chance somebody to, to win a ticket you know and it's it's been amazing uh, on how well successful that's went over we've still got some tickets that we're trying to, to settle sell and and we'll sell them all the way up till the night of the pork chop dinner and everything and somebody's going to walk away that night with a brand new john deere gator that guy, clay i've spent 1.8 million dollars trying to buy that gator <laughs> and i just can't get her done maybe you can give me some clues maybe, on maybe how this to do is that. your year phil maybe this is the one time you know like i said it just takes that one that's ticket right. you know, just right. buy that one ticket it is the annual guthrie ffa <laughs> booster club pork chop dinner october 19th it all starts at five o'clock uh, tickets in advance are ten dollars twelve dollars at the door uh, but I changed the venue for the we, for the we right. We did. That, that's the biggest deal we want everybody to know is, is this year we went back to the high school. Originally it started at the high school, and I don't know how long ago it did, but and then moved to the fairgrounds, and we we've moved it back to the high school. And the simple reason was we do all our food prep at the high school or at right. Guess, and so in order to save time and keep the food fresh as we can, we put it back to the high school. It services the same amount as what the fairgrounds building did, and so we just thought. Hey, this would be a little bit better to, way to serve our customers and keep the food fresh for them. It was fun, too, to get the community up at the high school and they can look around, see what's going on. And I know a lot of good things happening at the high school right now. Of course, Chris LeGrand and the whole staff up there does an outstanding job. And a few more seats, right? Yeah, there's a yeah. few more seats. It'll, we'll see about probably another 100 more than what we could yeah. at, the, at the community building. So that's always a good thing. Yeah. And like I said, just, I mean, it'll just uh, create a better flow, I believe, that. Yeah, we didn't have nothing that the community building was bad in any way but like i said a lot of it just is we want people to understand we want the food to be fresh for them and, and that's how we figured we can get the best freshness to, out to them um, we're going to have all those pork chops baked potatoes salad dessert you know all the good fixings for ten dollars i don't know a place you can go find a meal for that cheap and, and it's a it's a it's comes comes at a great time i'm sure you had a good part of this great timing because Guthrie football obviously played next Thursday. This is next Friday, right. so there's no school. There's no football game. This is a perfect time to take the family out. You're probably going to go out and eat anyway, well, so might as well go to the high school and have a, a pork chop and try to win a, 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 a raffle with the you – know, we mentioned the Gator, but there's some, some other cool there, stuff There's going to be lots of great uh, uh, door prize – or silent auction items, excuse me. I know we've got some football tickets to OSU. We've got actual basketball sign by Coach Mike Boynton. 
that I know my son is probably going to try to yeah. drain my bank account to win that thing. I think it's only right, Clay. And, uh, <laughs> done I, I just got to hide the checkbook because he thinks we can buy everything with checks. So, you know, well, as long as you got them, you know, you know, just, just right. But, no, we, we do have a lot of great items donated. We're going to have some items made from our Ag Mechanics kids as well that we're going to sell off during that event. And, uh, you know, like I said, it'll be a great deal. And like I tell people, if you can't join us for the meal, we have takeout. Yep. So mm -hmm. if you want to get something and it's 5 o'clock and I'm getting off work and I want to just go home and, and kick my feet up and watch some TV, come by and get a takeout meal and take it on home. And, you know, for all those dads out there, you want to be the hero of the night, you know, come by and, and you can cook dinner for the wife that night. So it's, it's always, always a great thing. Great food, yeah. guys. Next Fabulous Friday, food. yeah, one week from tonight, Friday, October 19th, the annual FFA Booster Club Pork Shop Dinner at Guthrie High School. A chance to win a, a 2018 John Deere Gator. Again, only 800 tickets will be sold. And, uh, of course, uh, all the proceeds, uh, 4-H and FFA members, scholarships, trips, equipment, all that good stuff. Well, I was going to tell I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, our booster club, we're, you know, I've, I've taught a few different schools, and I've had some booster clubs, and we're, I'm very blessed for the booster club we've got, very blessed for the community we have, but the booster club really cares about the kids. Last year, normally we've, in the past, we've sent one kid to Washington, D.C., to uh, an FFA conference there. Last year, we sent three kids to wow. Washington, D.C., because, because the community gives back to us, and we get passed on to the kids. Um, we also had the opportunity last year to purchase a new livestock trailer, which we were in great need. You know, again, I, I attribute all that to the community coming and supporting these type of events like this. Um, I'm, I'm always proud to tell people how great the Guthrie community is and how much they support everybody. And, and this is just one of those times that we invite them out to, to participate in this, and we thank them for you know, what all they do. Okay, you got everyone's appetite ready to go one week from tonight. How can they get tickets? Do they just show well, up? Well, a or? couple ways. If you know of any 4-H or FFA kids here in the Guthrie area, that is one way. Probably the best way if you're not sure, then just call up to the high school, ask for the Ag Department, and we will hook you up with tickets. And like I said, if you want them in advance or $10, or if you want to wait and get them at the door, that's fine too. It's just going to cost you a couple dollars more, but, yep. you know, it's however you want to do it. Um, but we will make way, you know, we will find ways to get you tickets if, if that's what you need to have. And same way with the Gator tickets. I mean, I'll drive across the nation to, to sell a ticket. Well, Clay, we appreciate you spending time with us. You do a great job up there. Yeah. It's, it's some, some great things are happening out there, and I think the community is starting to – they've always seen it, but it feels like a, an extra step or two have been taken over the last couple of years, so it's been exciting to watch. Well, it's been – like I said, it always helps when you have great kids. It makes it fun to, to do the job, you know, that you do when you have those kids that want to come to school and they want to be involved and they want to do those things. and. You know, just it, it kind of makes me a kid again whenever I get around those and get to participate in those events. Well, and I believe the ag programs, they, we've talked about this, Clay, they, they create leaders. And I, and I think you can learn so much about life. I would encourage just everybody as an ag kid myself, you know, if you haven't looked at the ag program, you need to because it's, it'll prepare you for so much in life. It's just a fabulous, fabulous organization. We're just lucky enough, Chris, that I think we have one of the best that's in the state. Absolutely. So it's, uh, Absolutely. But any ag program's great. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be here at Guthrie, you can really be involved with one that's outstanding. Well, I appreciate that, guys. Like I said, and I, I couldn't agree more with, with that deal. I wouldn't wouldn't trade it for any other program in the state. Clay, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we'll see you definitely one week from tonight. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Bring us a gift back from Nevada. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get you a little. I'm an XL. XL. XL, okay. <laughs> Clay Drake, FFA director at Guthrie High School, spending a little bit of time with us here on the Golden Chick Halftime Show. Halftime score, call over 14, got 3-0. Take a time out. We will return. Craig Flake rejoins us and takes a look at the first half stats and numbers. This is the Golden Chick Halftime Show. It's a beautiful day to introduce people to the golden goodness of Golden Chick. So this is your first time you've had Golden Chick. What do you think? Absolutely delicious. And these are 100% tenderloin, no mystery meat. I love them. They're oh, so okay. juicy and tender. How long do you think it takes to marinate a perfect piece of chicken? Probably 20 minutes. Yeah, about 20. An hour? What if I told you 24 hours? Wow. I feel like one of those infomercial guys. But wait, there's more time marinating the chicken. One taste and you're golden. The Golden Chick Halftime Show rolls on with the John Vance Auto Group scoring summary right after this. Football. Whether it's watching it on TV, listening on the radio, or going to a game, it's part of being an American. It's also part of being a Guthrie Blue Jays fan, where winning is a tradition. At John Vance Auto Group in Guthrie, we too have a tradition. It's one of treating our customers with respect. If you need a Ford, GMC, Cadillac, Buick, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram, new or pre-owned, come 
by and be impressed with how you'll be treated. John Vance Auto Group, it's all true. John Vance Auto Group. I-35, exit 153 in Guthrie. When it comes to Guthrie Blue Jay Athletics, Hayes Funeral Home is a proud supporter from the first game all the way to the championship game. Along with many years of experience in funeral service, the Hayes family brings compassion and professional service during difficult times. Owners Chuck and Lynette Hayes take pride in providing families and their loved ones quality care. Chuck and Lynette have not only supported families in the Guthrie area for countless years, but have supported Guthrie student athletes succeeding on the playing field and in the classroom. Hayes Funeral Home is located on the corner of Noble and Wentz, or simply give them a call at 405 282 I'm Mike Gundy, head football coach of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Respect of the opponent, spectators, coaches, and officials is necessary at all levels of athletics and activity programs. Your conduct is a direct reflection of you, your community, and your school. Sportsmanship is everyone's responsibility. Do the right thing. Golden Chick halftime show here in Guthrie. Jell's the stadium, historic downtown Guthrie on this Friday night. Guthrie High School marching band getting ready to take the field after the Carl Albert High School band got done performing. Did a good job there. Now it's the home team chance to perform here at halftime. The Carl Albert Titans with two passing touchdowns in that first half. Both coming in the first quarter. Lead the Blue Jays by a score of 14-0 here at halftime. Of course, this is the Golden Chick halftime show. We'll see our good friends at Golden Chick I-35 and Highway 33. Open late, open early. Lula and the crew do a tremendous job out there. One of the highest performing uh, Golden Chicks in the uh, in the nation. Not only here in the region or Oklahoma, but in the nation. And uh, it all c- because of the customer service and probably the rolls and ice cream doesn't yeah. hurt either. Uh, a pretty good start there, but uh, bring in Craig Flick as we take a look at the first half stats and numbers. As we go ahead and look at those first half stats and numbers, Carl Albert, 151 yards of total offense to 41 yards for Guthrie. Most of those coming on that last drive that Guthrie was able to put together starting inside their own one-yard line. Carl Albert doing that 151 uh, yards on 35 plays. That's about 4.3, a little bit over four yards per play. Guthrie on 20 plays. So about 2.1 yards per play. A 15-play advantage there for Carl Albert. 126 yards passing out of that 151 for Carl Albert. Zero yards passing for the Jays. Harris, the quarterback for Carl Albert, 8 of 20 in that first half. 15.8 yards per attempt. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jackson Waddell, 1 of 6. No yards. That one completion only got back to the line of scrimmage. Two interceptions for him as well, rushing the football. Only 25 yards rushing for the Carl Albert Titans. That coming on 15 attempts, about 1.7 yards per carry. 41 yards rushing for the Jays on 14 attempts. That's 2.9 yards per carry. Looking at penalties, four penalties for the Titans for 30 yards, three penalties for the Jays for 18 yards. Just those two interceptions on the turnovers. There was, however, a big miss interception by Turve Williams on the second drive by the Carl Albert Titans. The Titans able to score on the very next play. Looking at time possession, around 14 minutes for the Titans and around 10 minutes for the Jays as Carl Albert mostly through the air, did not take up a lot of time with a lot of incompletions. Nine first downs for Carl Albert, three for the Jays. Looking at third down conversions, that was my key to to the game before we started in pregame that the Jays needed to convert on third down. Well, they were one of six on third down conversions, 0 of one on fourth down conversions. Carl Albert, five of nine on third down. One of two on fourth down. Looking at some individual numbers now. Ben Harris, eight of 20 passing, as we said. Dadrian Taylor, however, only tw- he had 12 carries, but only 31 yards. That's a little over two and a half yards per carry. Jackson Waddell, leading rusher for the Jays, eight carries for 21 yards. Marcellus Owens, two carries for 17 yards. Uh, C.J. Ward, two carries for three yards. Kale Kaufman, two carries for zero yards. Um, Looking down defensive-wise, Turvey Williams is leading tackler for the Jays with 
five tackles in that first half. Hector Goosby following up with four tackles, then Cade Whitfield, Campbell Leach, and J.D. Coonfield with three tackles apiece. Those are your first half stats and numbers. We're going to go ahead and take another timeout, come back with the second half. You're listening to Blue Jay Football on Hot 93.7 FM and the Guthrie News page. Hey, Blue Jay fans, Esprit Chevrolet is a proud supporter of Guthrie High School sports. This season, Esprit Chevrolet at I-35 in Guthrie is cheering you the whole way and will help you score a game-winning deal in getting the new or used vehicle that you need. Don't worry about your credit history. Esprit Chevy can get you approved. Come see us at Esprit Chevrolet. Just a short drive to I-35 in the Guthrie exit on Division Street. Call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY or visit EspritChevy.com. It's a beautiful day to introduce people to the golden goodness of Golden Chick. So this is your first time you've had Golden Chick. What do you think? Absolutely delicious. And these are 100% tenderloin, no mystery meat. I love them. They're oh, so okay. juicy and tender. How long do you think it takes to marinate a perfect piece of chicken? Probably 20 minutes. Yeah, about 20. An hour? What if I told you 24 hours? Wow. I feel like one of those infomercial guys. But wait, there's more time marinating the chicken. One taste and you're golden. Golden Chick. <laughs> I need this pack. Oh, okay. Oh. Steady, it is the Golden Chick Halftime Show. Braden Russell on the camera tonight. This Kill, third week, it. third week in a row, man, it is amazing. Yeah, and we do have job. the the three camera system going on tonight, and uh, we need like we have like twenty five people on the team, but we need like two more to really do what we want to do. But uh, anyway, well, it's uh, hard for you to find help. You're pretty demanding. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Got three high school marchy band being. Uh, performing here at, on the surface of Gelsma Stadium. It looks like the field held up for the, for the most part decently in the first half, just as far as not getting tore up. It, right. it, it's soft. It's it's wet out there, obviously, but it, it held its... Uh, that looks good. Yeah, it looks like there's not like any big brown nope. marks out there, except for maybe a little in the five, but it's always wet in, in this northwest end zone. Yeah, over the shade lays. But uh, Craig went over those first half stats and numbers. Again, not a whole lot there. So I guess we can kind of get a little bit into our Escrow Chevrolet's keys to the second half. And the defense didn't play horrible. I mean, nope. hell, I mean there was two touchdown passes of, uh, what was it, 30 Four. and 40 yep. And, yep. And, and 30 down. As what, I can't remember right off the top of my head without yep. looking. But, uh, but other than that, Guthrie defense held their own. I mean, you know, if you're Kelly Beebe, I think you're happy with what the defense did in the first half. If you're, if you're Kelly Beebe, Scott Mick, you're probably – Trying, well, you're obviously trying to figure something out on the offensive side of the ball. We just could not get anything going. Got a little bit of, a little bit of momentum in that last drive, of the first half for the Blue Jays. But a lot of that was 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 came from penalties on Carl Albert. So, got to establish something. Of course, Blue Jays received the ball to start the second half, so they got to get something on the board. We'll hold off on those Escrow Shirley's keys in the second half as we bring you the uh, John Vance Motor scoring summary in the first half. Carl Albert Titans on their first. Scoring drive, six plays, 56 yards. Took less than a minute to score as it was highlighted by a 40-yard touchdown pass from Ben Harris to Anthony Davis. So with 8.24 to play in the first quarter, Titans had a 7-0 lead. Titans back on the scoreboard about six minutes later as they go nine plays, 46 yards in just under four minutes on their drive. It was a, another touchdown pass of 20 yards this time from Ben Harris to Anthony Davis as your halftime score 14-0. John Bates Motor scoring summary. John Vance, where it's comfortable to buy a truck. So, or SUV. Fan. Fan. All that good stuff. I'm, John's even got an airplane he might sell you. Price yeah, he's, right. got, he's, got a, well, he's got the uh, Guthrie dealership. got the Miami dealership and the Perry one. Yeah. Uh, they use that, that that airplane a little bit more than you know. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. They can just get an airplane and just take off. Well, um, you know, of course, it's got a, it's one of those that has a parachute on it, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> yeah. You know, absolutely. That'd be a heck of a ride down, though, wouldn't it? If yeah. you got to use a parachute on an airplane, something's definitely went awry. Not good. The yeah. uh, high school band got through high school band done performing. Now Guthrie has made their way into the end zone as they start to stretch out. Carl Albert. Still in their locker room. I'm sure they're getting ready close to come back out. And once they come out and start stretching, I think the referee will say, you got three minutes to get ready before yep. we kick off the second half. So we got a little bit. And here come the Titans down that ramp on that on that far side. And uh, real quick, while we've got some time, we want to say congratulations to the Lady J softball program. Uh, made it to the state tournament this year. 
dropped their opening game in the state tournament to the Piedmont Lady Wildcats. Uh, final score there was 3-1. to one. Lady Jays had a 1-0 lead after three innings, and uh, Piedmont got two runs in the sixth, a run in the seventh, and uh, uh, they advanced to the semifinals, which will now be played next week due to rain in the Shawnee area. But Lady Jays softball program and their first year uh, Booker Blakely go 23-6. and six. You look at their losses, two losses to Carl Lowert, who uh, you know many think might probably be in the state championship game. They had a loss to Mustang in the first game of the year, and they, they are the 6A defending state champions. A loss to Durant, who's made in the state tournament for the fifth year in a row, and their other loss to Shawnee, who hosted a regional this year. So you're talking about six quality losses. That's pretty darn good. But 23-6 and six on the year. Get the host of re got the host of regional for the first time since uh, 1998. And so uh, just a great thing uh, happening for that softball program. Well, I know the, the season didn't end the way the young ladies wanted it to, but I'll tell you what, girls are listening to parents. You guys got a lot to be proud of, and that's something they'll be able to look back on fondly for years to come. Any way you cut it, you make it down to the final eight. You've had a heck of a year. And as you said, Chris, one of the first time in a long time the Jays have made that state tournament so great job Lady Jays we're all very very proud of you yeah I got to make the state tournament uh, in 2015 so two times in four years and oh. it was that long drought uh, so you look at the seniors Kara Dean and Trend Trendon Legrand two of the four seniors that got to play the state tournament in their freshman and senior year then well, of course uh, um, Taylor Bolding also yes Taylor Bolding four-year starter four-year starter, four -year yep, starter exactly. catcher and yep great young lady and so just, you know, just great group of kids and a lot, a lot of things to look forward to. And then you look at the cross-country programs and the uh, Lady Jays cross-country. Yesterday won the Suburban Conference as Marcy DeMint, also as the Suburban Conference champion runner. She was the first one across the line yesterday. Uh, the Blue Jays finished fourth, and uh, I think they would have finished a distant second behind Piedmont, uh, the sleek the Slee kid. Uh, was in the top three for a little bit and they had to drop out uh, due to injury, but uh, uh, they're good. The junior high boys also won the Suburban Conference uh, title yesterday, and that was ran over in uh, Carl Albert uh, yesterday. So what a tremendous fall season. You got state tournament softball team. You got boys and girls cross-country, who I think both – Will should qualify for the state tournament. Then yep. you, you look at your football team, 6-0 and start to begin the season. Yeah, I mean, it's a good time right now in Blue Jay land. And, of course, the, the, the future is bright for our cross-country teams. You've got a lot of youngsters, as you talked about. Jay High winning the conference title yesterday as well. Our own very own Kel Evans, part of that yeah. team. Very proud of Kel. Did a great job. Medal, eighth place. Super job. I mean, the coaching. I mean, yeah, they do James Strayhorn. Job. Uh, uh, Booker Blakely. I mean, you know, of course, you got Clay Tarter, you know, the Hall of Famer. Is he it, pretty good? Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> but it, it's just, the, you know, great coachings uh, throughout the Guthrie High School out there. Yeah. And, uh, of course, high school basketball practicing right now. They, as the Blue Jays, make their way onto the field. And the crowd just now are realizing that. I think the crowd probably needs to get going a little bit more like this football team. And now they come to their feet here and trying to get a spark somehow. But uh, congratulations to the cross-country programs and the softball programs as the Blue Jays have made their way onto the field now. Uh, Phil, what the Blue Jays got to do as we get into our Escort Chile's keys to the second half, what the Blue Jays got to do to make this a ball game? Well, we got to establish something up front with the big uglies. And I think the defense has played pretty well and, and has done what I think they set out to do, which was to force Carl Albert to beat him with the pass. They had some success with that, obviously, in the first half, but... I think, again, on the defensive side, I think we more of the same. Continue to try to get a little bit more pressure on, on Ben Harris, but offense has got to get something established up front with the big uglies. Try to get the ball in their playmakers, number 26, C.J. Ward, and number three, Marcellus Owens. And, yep. you know, we just – and we got to quit turning the ball over. We had two turnovers in the first half. So clean it up, play smart, play aggressive. you got nothing to lose at this point, Chris. As Craig mentioned, Carl Herbert ran 35 offensive plays in the first half. Got through with 20 offensive plays and uh, Guthrie just 41 yards of offense um, and all 41 yards by the way coming via the ground so as Phil mentioned Blue Jays will receive the football to begin the second half so see if you can get a spark here early and make the Titans uh, realize that Guthrie's here to end it for the second half yeah I mean this opening drive is going to dictate a lot for the Blue Jays, if, if, they can, if they, I mean, they've got to go down and put points on the if, board. And this is obviously stating the obvious here, but I Guthrie's got to be the next team to score. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
With that, the Titans will kick off left to right on the radio dial. Glad to have you on board. 93.7 FM KSBI across north central Oklahoma. Back deep for the Blue Jays. Looks like Josh Trains has joined CJ and Marcellus back there. Officials have put it into play. No, they have not put it into play yet. And I think we are now set. So here we go. Titans look left to right here. They approach the football, and we're underway second half. This ball returned inside the 10, starting at the 9. It's Marcel Sones coming to the near side of the field, to the 20, 25, 30, to the 35. Tripped up at the 41-yard line. Blue Jay football first down and 10. There's a little bit of energy for the first time we see here in this ball game. That's good to see, Marcel. That senior leadership's got to come up right now big time. And, you know, they're, kids, get, kids watch these. Marcellus, 26, C.J. Ward. As their body language and as they go, the team's going to go. So it's good to see Marcellus get a spark right to start. Jackson Waddell, Blue Jay quarterback, just one of six in that first half pass. And again, those two interceptions. We'll see what the Jays do here with their game plan. Are they going to run the ball or going to throw the football? Jackson, eight carries for 21 yards, led the team in first half rushing. Two back set in the pistol formation, offset pistol here. Justin Adams, the up man. Kel Kaufman, the pistol back. They hand it to Kel. Kel got the first carry of the ball game, and he takes this one from the 41-yard line up to the 44, three-yard pickup. Kel Kaufman, his third carry of the night, his first positive run of the night. Three-yard pickup, just underway here in the third quarter. Jays will break huddle. Marcellus owns the receiver to the near side. A couple of tight ends in there for the two-back set. Jackson hands it off to Kell again, and Carl Albert pinned their ears and came after Kell that time. He loses a yard on that play as uh, number 22 has been busy for the Titans defense, and David Peters, 6'1", 170-pound junior. He's been impressive flying to the football, and now the Blue Jays face a third down and eight coming from their own 43-yard line. I've been a little bit surprised we haven't seen Justin Adams get more opportunities tonight. I don't know what really what's going on there. Justin, I think by all counts, has been the feature back all year. Blue Jays need the Carl Albert 49. Four receivers set. Three receivers to the far side. Marcellus in a slot. Jackson Waddell takes the shotgun snap. Hands it off to Kaufman up the middle across the 45 and down at the Guthrie 49. They need the Titan 49. And it looks like Jays will get six yards. They'll bring up fourth down and two. Here comes the, is that the punting team. Yep, yeah, punting team coming onto the field. Obviously, you got a punt here. He can't give Carl Albert too great a field position at the 49 if you don't get it. So try to pin him deep, back deep and play a little field position. David Vargas stands at his 33 yard line in punt formation. Movement by the Titans, no flag, got back. Flag, and now we have a flag delay game. from the back judge, and the back judge is gonna be a delay of game. Uh, Brack the Jays up five yards. Got the crowd, of course, once that offsides. Uh, look close, they're closer than us though. Fourth penalty for Guthrie, 23 yards. Ball backed up to the 44. David Vargas now at his 32-yard line. And we have a timeout taken by the Titans. They weren't lined up. Did they have two men on the field? Three, five, eight, 10, 12. Yeah, they had 12 men on the field. Carl Everett has to spend a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them. 9.45 to play in the third quarter. Guthrie punt the football when we come back. This is Blue Jay football. At Terra Insure Group, you'll be helped by lifelong Blue Jay fans. Jason Herzl, Dennis Oaks, and Seth Robbins. They aren't limited to any single provider. They'll work with you to find the carrier and the plan that fits you best. Terra Insure Group is an independent insurance agency specializing in home, auto, and commercial lines of insurance. Call Terra Insure Group at 293-4880 or stop by at 2403 South Division or visit them online at TIGOK.com. Terra Insure Group, insuring your world. 
Have you heard the big news here in Guthrie? You know the Guthrie Tag Agency is your local source for all your vehicles, boats, ATVs, trailers, titles, registrations, and of course, driver's license renewals and replacements. But now, the Guthrie Tag Agency helps with driver's road tests. That's right. Take your road test right here in Guthrie. No more trips to Edmond or Stillwater or Enid. Call and schedule your appointment at 282-3873. Guthrie Tag Agency, open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and on Saturdays from 9 to noon. Returning to action, David Vargas puts the football away. Fair catch called for inside the 30-yard line. It'll be marked at the 28-yard line. So here comes the Carl Albert offense onto the field for the first time here in the second half as they force the Blue Jays to punt the football on their opening drive. And so 9.39 to play in the third quarter. Carl Albert 14, Guthrie 0. Feels an awful lot like it did in the first half, Chris. Not really able to get much going offensively. Defense has to make a stop here and force a turnover. We've got to have something to turn this momentum around. Ben Harris back in at quarterback. Dadrian Taylor on his right side. Another running back on the left side. Two back set here. They hand it off to Taylor trying to get on the left side. Cuts it to the 30, 35, 40, tripped up at the 42-yard line. So we see the best carry of the night by Dadrian Taylor. He's pretty much well uh, held up in that first half. Titans went through the air a little bit uh, more than suspected, but it is a big carry for Dadrian Taylor. Marcellus Owens on the tackle. 14-yard pickup for Dadrian Taylor. Taylor now 13 carries for 45 yards. First down and 10. Two back set, play action. Harris throw into the Carl Albert bench, incomplete. Harris has missed, he's missed bad, but he's missed when he's, a couple good balls have been caught for touchdowns. Titans taking their time as they break huddle. Ball's marked at the Titan 42-yard line. Two receivers come to the near side. In the slot is Jonathan Mosley. Two back set as well. Hand off to the 45 flag thrown, tackled at midfield. It was in the area of holding when the Titan running back made his cut. We'll see if that's the case. That is the call as the referee threw that flag and it will come backwards. Kel Kaufman will check in defensively for the Blue Jays here on this play as Goosby comes out onto the Guthrie sideline. Hector Goosby. Holding on the Titans will bring it way back. Back at the 32 yard line. So it'll be second down and 20. Titans need the Guthrie 48 yard line for a first down. See if they look for something underneath to make it a third down and manageable situation. Four receivers, twins receivers to each side. Harris looking to throw. Here's the pressure. Perfectly screen call, but Harris unable to get it to Dadrian Taylor. It was a low pass. Taylor, if he did feel it, I don't think there would have been a whole lot there, well, but it is a third down and 20 play upcoming. Sophomore number 20, Williams for the Blue Jays in great position to make a play if that pass was completed, Chris. Read it well. Really coming along this year. Yeah, leading tackler for the Jays. Had 18 tackles, I think, last week. Yeah, led the team in tackles last week up in Woodward, Oklahoma. Third down and 20. See what the Blue Jays do here defensively. See, they bring the pressure. Four receivers, same formation as the one before. Titans, oh, another flag thrown before the snap. It would usually indicate false start, but line judge threw the flag. It is a false start on Carl Albert. Good officiating crew again. Referee Reggie Redwine, the umpire tonight, Kyle Carnes. Headlinesman Devin Simpson, line judge Francis Nolt, and the back judge is Mick Hart. Nine minutes of play here in the third quarter. Titans 14, Guthrie 0. That was the score after the first quarter. Titans break huddle now with the football at the 27-yard line. Third down and 25. This is where Texas had OU perfectly at third and long last week. Third and 25, Harris 
Comes near side, looking for the tender receiver in Dills, but overshoots him near the Guthrie sideline, incomplete. And so the Titans will have to pump the football away with 8.55 to play in the third quarter. And if the Guthrie offense can just get anything yep. going, yep. again, I, I think that my key for the second half is Guthrie's got to be the next team to score to make this a ball game. Well, and Guthrie has an opportunity here to have outstanding field position. Should come away with the best field position of the night. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't have to be an offensive touchdown. No. It can be special teams. It can be no. defense. It can be anything right now. Chris, you could score at this point. We'd be excited. Well, I, I know. Yeah, okay. Fourth down, 25. Punt in time inside the 15-yard line. It's a good snap to the punter, Harris. He gets a nice end-over-end -end punt. Marcellus fills it at the 40-yard line. Fair catches it right there. And so Guthrie, offense back onto the field. First down in 10. 8.47 to play. Here in the third quarter, Jay's offense trying, searching, digging to get something going here offensively. Their best play, if I recall correctly, was a little reverse play. Marcellus owns in that first half. Guthrie just 49 yards of offense coming on 23 offensive plays. Only 2.1 yards per play so far for this offense. Boy, we're talking about the Guthrie defense, the Carl Albert offense, but right now the story and this one, I think, has been the Carl Albert defense. Yep, no doubt about it. I think surprised a lot of us. Blue Jays to the line of scrimmage. Couple tight ends here with two receivers to the near side. First down and 10. Handoff on the right side. I think that's a new running back yeah. in there. I didn't quite see the number. It looked different when he took the handoff. Looked a whole lot different. Out to the 44-yard line. Pick up a three. 13. Is that Josh Reigns? Yep. Yeah, Josh Reigns gets the carry for the Blue Jays. Jersey number 13, sophomore. Plays primarily on the defensive side, but we've seen him a few times offensively. Remember, he had the uh, great pass in Piedmont. Yeah, he's a different kind of kid, too. I mean, more of a between the tackles, going to yep. go out and hit somebody kind of player. Lines up on the right side of Jackson Waddell. Second down and seven from the Jays' 44-yard line. Reigns again. He'll go to the right side. He goes across the 45. Here's a flag thrown by the referee again in the area of holding. And uh, Guthrie has a hard time on second down and seven, but they really put themselves in a hole when they're behind the chains. And this one's going to be about a second down and 12 play come, depending on where the, where the hold came in at. But Guthrie will have a second down and long play up coming with Edel five to play in the third. Ball marked at the 34. Second down. We'll call it 17 for the Blue Jays. Jays in the all gray uniforms tonight. Good look. Three receivers to the near side to Lee Jackson. Now in the motion from left to right. Waddell takes the shotgun snap. He'll roll to the near side. Looking to throw. Nothing there. Steps up and again, nothing there. When, when, the, when the receivers are covered up, Jackson in the past has obviously tucked the ball and has had success running the football. But every time he has done that here tonight, he has gone backwards. And backwards the Jays go again at the 31-yard line. And the Blue Jays will need the Carl Albert 49-yard line. So about, a, we'll call it third down and 20 play upcoming. Yeah, it's tough to get anything positive going, as you said, Chris, when you're behind the chains. Carl Albert open up with Midwest City and Dell City. One possession victories over their mid Dell rivals and have easily taken down their last four opponents. Third down and 20. A little handoff to Reigns. Bounces off a player to the 35. Nothing there. Four-yard pickup. Fourth down and punting time for the Blue Jays. So we've seen Jackson with a couple interceptions. Blue Jay offensive staff keeps it on the ground. Try to play field position again here with this punt by David Vargas. David set for his fourth punt of the night, averaging right about 30 yards per punt as he stands inside the 25-yard line. It's a good snap at the face mask. It's a high 
kick angling toward the Guthrie sideline. It bounces inside the 30, inside the 40, and rolls down to the 35 yard line. Carl will have the football with 6.06 to play here in the third quarter. They have a 14 0 lead. With that, we'll take a timeout. You're listening to Guthrie Blue Jay football on Hot 93.7 FM, KSBI. They say talk is cheap, and they're right, especially when it comes to football. Only the most talented, hardest working, most physically fit, and best coached teams win football games. It's the same with John Vance Auto Group in Guthrie. We don't just talk about great service, best price, and a free lifetime powertrain guarantee. We do it. Come by and see for yourself. Everything you've heard about the John Vance Auto Group, it's all true. I-35, exit 153 in Guthrie. John Vance Auto Group. I'm Mike Gundy, head football coach of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Respect of the opponent, spectators, coaches, and officials is necessary at all levels of athletics and activity programs. Your conduct is a direct reflection of you, your community, and your school. Sportsmanship is everyone's responsibility. Do the right thing. Stadium on a Friday night. Blue Jay offense having a hard time getting anything going. It's kind of been the story tonight as the Carl Albert offense getting ready to come back onto the field. Leading the Blue Jays by a score of 14 to 0. That was the score at the end of the first quarter. Braden Russell, Craig Fleck, Aaron Ryburn, Phil Nichols, Chris Evans with you here. Daryl Jones back in our Stillwater studio. First down and 10 for the Titans from their own 35 yard line. Hand off to Taylor. He's going to try to stretch it on the far side. Yet to cut, yet to cut. He's going to be driven out of bounds nicely for a loss on the play. That okay, was Dominic Goosby. Great job. The only bad thing about these gray jerseys, they are, it's kind of hard to pick numbers up. Yeah. Especially the, could just be my old eyes, I guess. They get watered down. The, the gray gets a little bit grayer. Yeah, yeah. As Shaw Strange sprints off the field for this upcoming second down and 14 play. Turbe Williams and Cade Whitfield in the middle of that Blue Jay defense. Four-man rush. Play action. Harris had the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. Was it Camel Leach on that yep. right defensive side? Yep. He did. And so it's third down and 14. So the defense continues to put themselves in good position here as Carl Harris behind the chains just... Again, holding pace since that first quarter. Again, Carl Everett with two touchdowns, but came through the air on deep passes of 20 and 40 yards. Yeah, Campbell continues this outstanding play at that end position. Doing a fabulous job. Defense, as we've said repeatedly, doing a good job tonight. Titan faking their time to the line of scrimmage with 10 seconds on the play clock. Clock stop, game clock stopped at 554. It'll start when the snap comes here. There's the snap. Play action, give it off to Dadrian Taylor, breaks the tackle to 30, across the 35 and down at the 37. Eight yards shy of the first down. So here comes Carl Albert back onto the field to punt the football away. See what Guthrie can come up with here offensively, trying to find their way. Got to have a spark somewhere, perhaps on a punt return or something. We've got to get something going offensively, Chris. Titans to punt for the fourth time. Averaging about 30 yard, 38 yards a punt tonight. Pretty good job here by Ben Harris. Another high punt. It'll bounce inside the 40. Guthrie will get away from it. It'll be down inside the 35, down at the 34. So here comes that Guthrie offense back onto the field with 5.05 to play in the third quarter. Again, Blue Jays just 53 yards of offense on 26 snaps of the football. One of six passing with two interceptions. They rushed the ball 20 times tonight for just 53 yards. Just, just a little bit under three yards a carry. Blue Jays went with Talik Jackson in the opening series at the tight end spot. He dropped it. See if Guthrie can go back to that play and see if Talik can bring it in. First down 10 from the 34-yard line. Jackson Waddell in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Play action. He'll run with it, and he'll get to the 35-yard line. About a yard and a half is about as much as Jackson can get. Again, Jackson's had a hard time the entire night on design run plays or when he's trying to tuck it and run. Nothing has been there for Jackson. And the Blue Jays now facing a second down and nine.
Brody Hinkle, the receiver in the slot. Three receivers on second down and nine from the 35. Handoff. Jays go on the right side and got a yard pickup. Third down and seven. Jays being conservative. Conservative a little bit here in the second half. Still trying to establish something up front, Chris. Just not having any success right now. That defensive line for Carl Albert, as, as reported, I think definitely the strong suit of the defense. Jay's facing the third down and seven. Trips receivers to the near side. Jackson looking to throw, has time. Now he'll take off and run with it. Gets to the 40, needs the 45 for the first down and gets it. He's at midfield, across the 45 and tackled at the 43-yard line. So about a 20 yards plus run there by Jackson Wydell. Blue Jays will move the chains and are inside Carl Albert territory. Maybe that's a little spark they need, Chris, to get some momentum going. The crowd was pretty flat, and that got the crowd up off their feet, making some noise here at Jeltsman. 20-yard run for Jackson Wendell. Blue Jays quickly to the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 from the Titan 43-yard line. Ball's on the air, hash mark. Jackson will run with it again. He dives to the 41. A two-yard pickup. And bring up second down and eight. Clock rolling. 3.35, 3.34 to play here in this third quarter. Guthrie down 14-0 again. I certainly think Guthrie will have to be the next team to score to make this a competitive ball game because time is now around 15 minutes and 20 seconds to play in this game. So Guthrie... Love to put some points on the board here to make this a fourth quarter ball game. Three receiver set, three receiver set, second down and eight from the Titan 41. Jackson stays calm in the pocket and it goes through the hands of the intended receiver. Then it was almost intercepted as Marcellus did not see that one through and Jackson almost with the third interception of the night. That one would, would not have been his fault, but no. it does fall incomplete. It brings up another third down and eight play and now you're, you're starting to think it's going to be a, a uh, Four down territory. Jackson will now check to the line of scrimmage. Blue Jays readjusting this play here. Eight seconds on the play clock, though. Out of time getting this one off. Down to five. Jackson sees it. Down to two. Takes a snap with one. Third down and eight. Jackson going downfield as he was hit as he threw the flag football and now there's a flag thrown in the area of Ruff and the passer. Not necessarily Ruff and the passer, but was it, was it a face mask? It was. Face mask against Carl Albert. I think that's a third or fourth face mask, call, face mask call against the Titans tonight. Yeah, the third of the night. And is that a first down? It, it is a first. Was, I didn't see if it was 15 yards or five yards. It was, was, fi yeah. was, 15. was 15. So, yeah, it is a first down. So, here you go. You know, Guthrie has been given opportunities. They've had their opportunities tonight, Chris, to, to, to have some success offensively, just haven't been able to capitalize. This is their best opportunity yeah. by far the entire night. First down and 10. Hand off to Kel Kaufman. He goes across the 25 for about a two-yard pickup to the 24-yard line. 2.52 and rolling the play here in the third quarter. I just think you got to find Talik Jackson somewhere mm. in the flow. I know he dropped the first one. Hard to go back to him, but I think he has the advantage somewhere in that middle of that Carl Albert defense sometime on a, on a read pass option type play here. I'm not sure. It's a play I'm looking for. Second down and eight. There's a replay option. Marcellus with the catch at the 20, and they'll mark him at the 19. Good play for five yards. They'll bring up a third down and three play upcoming, and obviously four down territory here. I don't know if a field goal does you any good. I think you're, you're definitely four down territory down here. Jays to the line of scrimmage. Kel Coppin on the right side of Jackson Waddell. Three receiver set. Jackson. Mm to run for it, which was the right option because Kell was going to be covered up for a loss, but Jackson unable to do anything. Carl Albert just crashed the ends, and now Guthrie, after a loss on the play, back to the 21, facing about a fourth down and five play upcoming. Blue Jays obviously will go for it here at the 21. They need just... 
They need every bit of the 16-yard line for a first down. Jays will the ball what? snap, and Jackson wasn't oh. ready for it. He picks it up at the 40 and goes right down at the 41-yard line. It'll be Carl Albert football, and that was completely, completely ugly offensively. There's Carl Albert will take over on downs with 118 to play in the third. And so now he comes back to the Guthrie defense to try to keep this a two-possession ball game as Jackson was not ready for the snap, picked it up, and just went down to avoid any other catastrophe on that play. Again, kind of like all night, Chris, anything that can go wrong seems to go wrong. Just when the Blue Jays get a little momentum going, they shoot themselves in the foot. Titans to the line of scrimmage, three receivers to the far side. Balls at the Titan 41-yard line. Ball placed on the near hash mark in front of the Guthrie bench. Harris, we have a couple of flags. Line judge and the referee saw the same thing. It's going to be a false start against Carl Iris. So the Guthrie defense trying to hold on once again as C.J. We'll check in for Marcellus at that right corner back spot. Caden Ballard-Stevenson, the corner on the left side. Turvey Williams and Cade Whitfield, your linebackers in the middle of that defense. J.D. Clunfield, a safety. 117 to play here in the third. Penalty moves it back to the 36-yard line. First down and 15. Three receiver set, two to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Harris takes the shotgun snap, wants to throw. Wide open cut is Taylor at the 36, gets the line of scrimmage. Original line of scrimmage, makes mm. it a Blue Jay miss, and he's down the far sideline. And he stepped out of bounds at the gut three. We'll call it the 41-yard line. So about a 23-yard play for Dajan Taylor as he caught that one out of the backfield. And the Titans are back in Blue Jay territory. Twenty-three yard reception for Dadrian Taylor. It's first down and ten. Three receivers to the near side. Harris takes the shotgun snap, throws it again, caught in the backfield by Vills. The receiver spins to the 40. Hit pretty hard right there for a short pickup of one yard, being second down and nine. Guthrie defense continues to play well yep. in the uh, last several minutes of this ball game. Blue Jay defense has been there really all night. I think we're probably not over 100 yards total offense yet, are we? We're close to it on the offensive side for the Jays. 63 went backwards on that big loss by Jackson, or excuse me, the snap. Right. Lost 20 yards on that play. They, with that, they still weren't near 100 yards. Second down and eight from the Guthrie, 39-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground to the time. Taylor breaks the tackle, 35, 30, 25, and down at the 20-yard line. That could be the... Final play of the quarter if the Titans elect to choose so. They're going to climb down at the 23-yard line. So about a 16-yard pickup for Dadrian Taylor. He's getting, again, missed a, had a knee injury in back in week one. Did not play week two, three, four, five. And here he is in here in week seven, getting a, a lot more snaps. 12 seconds on the game clock. Titans to the line of scrimmage with nine on the game clock. First down and 10 from the Guthrie 23-yard line. Snap with two seconds, hand off to Taylor on the left side, finds a hole across the 20, and it will be maybe finally brought down just in front of the 15-yard line. That's the end of the third quarter. Scoreboard remains the same. Carl Albert 14, Guthrie 0. We'll take a timeout, get set for fourth quarter action. You're listening to Guthrie Blue Jay football on Hot 93.7. When the store problems occur, don't call it. Blue Jay fans, Eskridge Chevrolet is a proud supporter of Guthrie High School sports. This season, Eskridge Chevrolet at I-35 in Guthrie is cheering you the whole way and will help you score a game-winning deal in getting the new or used vehicle that you need. Don't worry about your credit history. Eskridge Chevy can get you approved. Come see us at Eskridge Chevrolet. Just a short drive to I-35 in the Guthrie exit on Division Street. Call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY or visit EskridgeChevy.com. 
Sonic has every slush flavor someone could ever want. This is basically slush headquarters. Where sour blue raspberry plans world domination. Well, not if Lemonberry has anything to say about it. Oh, Lemonberry, you're already sour. Come to the sour side. Never. I'll never join you. Refreshment just got colorful with new slush flavors like blue raspberry made with Nerds candy. And start your day with the 99 cent morning drink stop. Sonic at I-35 at Highway 33. This is how you Sonic. Welcome back, Joe. Jose on well, this Friday night. Raiden Marie Russell on the camera. Appreciate her on the main camera. Great flick. Stats and numbers. Aaron Ryburn producing. Messing with that second camera. Phil Nichols tomorrow. Chris Evans with you here on this Friday night. Blue Jays trailing the Carl Titans by a score of 14-0. to Titans with the football. Threatened to put more points on the board and be bad news for the Blue Jays if uh, Carl Albert can make this a three-score ball game. The Jays had yet to have 100 yards of offense. Starting to see that running game of Carl Albert starting to have more and more success, Chris. You know, the defense been out there a bunch tonight. Looked very, very tired to be quite even watch them come back on the field. And Usually when that happens, you start seeing somebody, especially a running back like Taylor's, with Taylor's ability to start having some success, starting to see him chop off larger gains. When we resume action, it'll be second down at four for Carl Albert from the Guthrie 17-yard line. Some 5A scores real quick. Duncan leads the arena in the fourth quarter, 35-9. Duncan's getting ready to go 7-0 on the season. The, the, the big part of their schedule is coming up in the final three weeks of the season. We'll see how they haul up. It's one of, the, one of the best starts they've had in a long, long, long time. It looks like a playoff team. It looks like Lawton Mack might be the odd team out this year in 5A1. I'm not sure the last time that ever happened. Resume in action here, second down to four. It's a wildcat reverse. Now it's going to be a pass in the end zone. Vils, and it's incomplete. Nicely broken up in the end zone by the Blue Jays. Marcellus Owens on a well-designed play out of the timeout there by Carl Lauer. It was just well played by the Guthrie defense. Marcellus actually was out of position, broke to the ball, did a great job to get back here to break that pass up. Third down four. Taylor's going to stay in there for the Wildcat run here. Imagine he'll go to the right side, which is the wide side of the field. He will on third down and four from the 17, trying to get there, breaks one tackle, has the first down, lowers the shutter once more inside the 10, tackled inside the five at the three-yard line. And so it'll be first and goal for the Titans. Score here is... Uh be hard to overcome for the Blue Jays, Chris. A lot of blowouts tonight in 5A football. Ada shutting out Durant, 28-0. Piedmont beating Guyman, 56-0. McGinnis won last night, 63-0. Claremore leads Tulsa Memorial, 34-0. Woodward beat Northwest Class in 64-0. First down to go from the four. Adrian Taylor tries to keep it on the Wildcat, and uh, not much there. He might got to get back to the line of scrimmage. Blue Jay defense holds, brings up second down and goal. Big David Scott, I think, in there getting some push. Altus leading lot MacArthur. Score there is 30 to 17. MacArthur looks like they're getting ready to head to three and four on the year. Altus looks like they're going to prove to six and one. Altus only lost this year coming from Ardmore. Ardmore's off to a 7-0 start. Second down and go for the Titans as they make their way toward the Rock. Taylor on the Wildcat cuts it up at the five, and he'll get down in around the one-yard line, just shy of the end zone. It'll be third down and goal with 11 minutes to play in the ball game. Carl Everett on top 14-0, but in danger of making a 20-0 ball game. Stillwater, we mentioned earlier, trailed Lawton, but now has a two-point lead in Lawton, 16-14. That game in the fourth quarter. Times to the line of scrimmage. Third down and goal from the one yard line. Dadrian Taylor stays in there as the Wildcat. He takes the snap up the middle, dives, reaches, and he gets in there for the touchdown. Dadrian Taylor and the Carl Irons with the first rushing touchdown of the night. Pulls them ahead now 20 to zero, PAT upcoming. What kind of game in this type of, in this, pe- this place in the game, you're going to find out a lot about these kids from Guthrie. Of course, I think a lot of people coming in tonight wanted to get kind of a measuring stick. Guthrie's competed. Just haven't been able to get anything going offensively thus far. 
And he on for the PAT. Snap hold, kick, will it get there? If it does, it'll be good. It does, barely crawl over the crossbar. New score with 10-29 to play in the fourth quarter. Carl Albert 21, Guthrie 0. This is Guthrie Blue Jay Football. Accepting the loss of a loved one is the hardest thing we will ever have to do. At Nelson Monument Company, formerly Warren Monument Company, we aim to make selecting a memorial an easy and healing process. With our compassionate service, state-of-the-art design software, and our new and improved facility, we offer the best overall experience in the industry. Nelson Monument Company, located at 5305 South Division Street in Guthrie. Give us a call at 405-282-3220. Hi, this is Asa Nelson, and from our family to yours, we would be honored to gain your trust. Sometimes you need immediate care and can't get in to see your doctor during regular hours. With Mercy Convenient Care in Guthrie, you can walk in without an appointment and get the medical attention you need at a lower cost and with shorter waiting time than your local emergency room. The Mercy Convenient Care is located at 2919 South Division. For any concerns, call 405-282-6301. Services are provided by Mercy Hospital, Logan County. Choose Guthrie. Choose Mercy. Titans, 59 yards on nine plays for the latest scoring summary. One-yard touchdown run by Dadrian Taylor. 21-0 Titans on the scoreboard. 10-29 left in the ballgame. That's your John Vance Motor scoring summary. John Vance where it's comfortable to buy a truck. Carl Albert Titans up here will be heading to 7-0 on the season. And their win streak numbers will continue to go up, up, up. They've won 34 of their last 35 ball games. There's a little sky kick on the near side. Fair catch called for. And if this is an offsides on Carl Albert, I think I don't think you can decline it because it whistle blew. So you gotta re-kick this one here. So Carl will probably kick this one a little bit deeper. Chris, what can you take away from this so far for the Jays? I mean, what do you? Well, I mean, you're obviously going to probably more than likely drop this one here. Still ten and a half minutes to go. Where do things have happened? But sure. your goals are still in front of you. Um, you know, Northwest Class and Lawton McGinnis is still in front of you. So the goal of hosting a first-round playoff game still remains despite the loss here as the kickoff is will be returned from the 31-yard line up to the 40 and down at the 42-yard line. Blue Jay offense back onto the field for a first down 10 play upcoming. Still got your goals in front of you of hosting a first-round playoff game. And, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing the best, I mean, obviously, of where, you, where, you, where you're at. And now, now you, the perfect season has gone away. Now you can really see where you stand. And now let's work on what we need to work on. Yeah, I think real important that we have some success offensively here. It'd be nice to get some points on the board for the Jays. And a little confidence going into the last two weeks, or last three weeks of district play. Midwest City leads Deer Creek in Midwest City tonight, 28 to nine. That's in the fourth quarter. First down, 10 for the Blue Jays from their own 42-yard line. Two back set with three wide receivers for Jackson Waddell. Back in at quarterback. Jackson will run on the right side and makes one guy miss, and then just kind of lunges forward to the 44-yard line for a two-yard pickup. And Unfortunately, there have been a lot of plays for the country exactly like that tonight. Shawnee made the trip to Muskogee. Former Blue Jay coach Rafe Watkins and the Ruffers have an eight-point lead, 21 to 13. Those are some of the scores in 6A Division II. We'll make our way to 6A Division I, kind of give you some scores around the state of Oklahoma. Broken Arrow, Edmund Santa Fe, labeled as the number two game in the state tonight. It's all Broken Arrow as the... Tigers continue to have an impressive 7-0 season. They lead Santa Fe 35-0 that game in the fourth quarter. Second down eight, Jackson wants to throw. Steps up in the pocket and is sacked back at the 40-yard line. It's going to be a loss on a play, and it'll bring up a third down and 11 play upcoming. Blue Jays receivers have had a hard time getting open tonight, and now the Blue Jays will be in a third down passing situation here. Mustang leading Edmund North 38-14. PC North last night defeated Norman North. The score there was 44 to 14. Westmore leading UConn 35-14. Finally found a good game. Southmore and Owasso. Surprise, surprise, actually. There, Southmore only a one-win ball club this year, taking on the defending state champions. That in the third quarter is 13-13. Hmm. Third down 11 for the Blue Jays. Three receivers to the far side. Jackson moves out of the pocket. 
Going to have to take off and run with this one as he is pushed out of bounds, shy of the first down marker. We'll see where he marks. He's pretty close to the first down. They're going to be about, I think, about a yard shy of the first down. Jackson picks up 10 yards, needed 11. Obviously, the Blue Jays will go for it here on fourth down and one from the Carl Albert 49-yard line. Enid attempting for their second win of the season. Trails Norman 28-21. One other game in 6A1 football. Jinx shutting out Ed Memorial in the third quarter, 21-0. Blue Jays to the line of scrimmage, fourth down and one. A couple of halfbacks in there. For the Blue Jays on this fourth down one play. Jackson will keep it. We'll have the first down and more. Trying to get away from his own teammate. And Jackson's tackled at the 45-yard line. It will be a fresh set of downs for the Jays. Yeah, get some success here. Try to get some points on the board. As you said, Chris, weirder things have happened. Long ways to go with 840 remaining in the game. Blue Jays 76 yards of offense as they get ready to snap the ball for the 40th time tonight. Jackson, play action, trying to find the receiver at the 45, and here's a flag thrown <coughs> as Josh Raines was the intended receiver. It was going to be pass interference called on Montrell Britt. Britt on the cover. And the referee makes it official with the pass interference. And so this will be 15 yards, and the Blue Jays will have the football. And around the 30-yard line after this one's marked off. This will be the second time. This will be the second deepest the Guthrie offense has got in the Carl Albert territory. See if the Jays can take advantage of this as they move left to right on the radio dial. Again, be sure to join us. One week from last night, it'll be a Thursday night football game when Guthrie takes on Northwest Classen. Northwest Classen again struggling this year. Blue Jays will be heavy favorites in that one as we make the trip to Oklahoma City. Our pregame show starts at 6.30, both on 93.7 FM and on our video feed. Jays take it again at the 30-yard line following the pass interference penalty. Jackson looked to throw one-on-one, -on -one, looking for Marcellus inside the five, and Marcellus... Unable to make the catch inside the five. Pretty good coverage there. Marcellus was able to get one hand on the football. Couldn't bring it in, though. Second down, 10 upcoming. 8-17 left in the ballgame. Marcellus, good effort there, trying to bring the ball in. Four receiver set for Jackson Waddell in the Blue Jay offense. Second down and 10. Josh Reigns catches it behind, way behind the line of scrimmage and able to get to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10. Guthrie just unable to get anything going yeah. offensively. They're trying a little bit of, of here and here of, of some different things, but it's just not working. Carl Everett defense just a, a lot more quicker than it's Jay's offense. Yeah, there's too much team speed on the defensive side of the ball from, from the Titans. and Just never really established anything up front, Chris. Four receiver set. Twin receivers to each side. Jackson looks to throw. Has time. Center of the field. Double coverage. Up. And it's incomplete. At the goal line, the intended receiver was Marcella Owens. Had a pretty good look at it for a double coverage there. And it'll bring up fourth down and ten. Obviously, the Jays will keep the offense on the field. Collier and Wyndham on the stop. Blue Jays now two of ten passing for five yards. Got a field goal attempt out there, Chris. Jays will bring on David Vargas. Be a 47-yard field goal attempt. It would be the season long, and I think it would be the career long for Vargas. Looking to put some points on the board. Snap, hold, kick. It's a line drive kick, and it's not close as it is wide to the left, and I don't think it quite had the distance there. As the Jays will give the football back over to Carl Albert Titans with 7.35 left in the ballgame. Seven, or excuse me, 21-0 Titan lead.
Be sure to join us in the Terry and Sugar Group postgame show. We'll have our John Benz Motor scoring summary and take a look at, at the stats and go down on the field as the Blue Jays are searching for points and we have a timeout on the field. I think it is a media timeout. 7.35 left in the ball game. Carl Albert 21, Guthrie 0. This is Blue Jay football. Hello, Blue Jay family. I'm Pastor Hetty. I want to invite you to North Church Guthrie, where you can expect fun, Bible-centered kids and student ministries, life-giving groups, engaging worship, and powerful messages. I would love to see you and your family at North Church Guthrie this Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. at Guthrie Upper Elementary School, where our vision is to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. And remember, God loves you, and go win. For decades, Guthrie Athletics has been a source of pride in the Guthrie community. Hi, I'm Eric Roberts, and I've been a Blue Jay supporter and Farm Bureau agent for many, many years. I want to wish all the Guthrie student athletes not only a great season on the field, course, track, or court, but in the classroom as well. If integrity, honesty, and accessibility are important to you, call Farm Bureau at 620-4920 and ask for merit. I would welcome the opportunity to give you a professional evaluation of your insurance needs or simply stop by and let's talk about the Jays. Titans on first down, run the football on the right side. I certainly think they'll keep it on the ground here and run some time off the clock. A one-yard pickup, maybe two at most. It'll be second down. We'll call it eight yards upcoming. For the two-time defending state champion Carl Albert Titans, Ben Harris, the sophomore quarterback, can already go 21-0 in his young career. Started as a freshman, got that job due to injury and never let it go and won that job in the offseason as well. I think it's his for the next couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and eight from the 22-yard line. Again, Carl Albert will keep this on the ground and they will play action. Taylor on the right side and he's tackled for about three, four-yard pickup and bring up a short third down play upcoming. Scott in on the stop. Brings up third down for the tight. Time to the line of scrimmage, 15 seconds on the play clock. Third down three, 6-14. Wildcat, Taylor will keep it. Tackled at the 25-yard line, loss of two on the play. It'll bring up a fourth down play here. Carl Albert obviously taking some time off the clock. By running the football, they'll punt the football away as we go in our midway point of this fourth quarter. C.J. Ward and Marcel Stones will be back deep for the Blue Jays as Ben Harris comes on to punt the football. Nice job there by Kel Kaufman. Kel comes off the field. Looks like he's got a shoulder dinged up a little bit. Harris stands inside his own 15-yard line. Carl Albert with that touchdown here in the fourth quarter. First time they scored since the first quarter. Really haven't had to press the issue a whole lot offensively. Just running some basic offense as Harris with a great punt. High, deep. Bounces at the 40. C.J. falls and this one will roll down to the 30-yard line will be first down and 10. We brag enough, and rightfully so, for Ben Harris playing quarterback. But he's had a great night punting the football as well. He's a, a great distance, but great height on those punts as well. And uh, just a very talented athlete at Carl. I really wouldn't expect anything different coming from the Middale School District. Midwest City has been playing some great football for a long, long time. Dale City's had a resurgence over the last couple of years, and good to see them as they make their way back up to 6A to football after being in 5A for a little bit. Blue Jay football first down and 10 from the 31-yard line. Jackson looks to throw. Hit as he throws. It's into triple coverage and almost intercepted by the Titans. Number 10 had a chance at that one. Enrico Windham as Jacob Jackson, excuse me, comes up limping as he took a pretty good shot on after delivering that football. Jackson, tough kid. I don't think I've ever seen Jackson come off the field in his career as Blue Jay. Three-year starter for the Jays. Guthrie now two of 11 passing the football tonight for a total of five yards. Been the story of the night, Chris, no doubt about it. Just couldn't get anything going offensively. And 
Titans about to win their third in a row over the Blue Jays. Ball's at the 31. Jackson a little lead play on the left side. Not much there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. As the clock will roll here. Blue Jays. Starting to realize can't haven't been able to do anything else. It's just kind of run this one out and live to see another day as they will, again, take on Northwest Classen, but a huge time. The next time the Blue Jays come back into Jones Stadium, it will be a big, big ball game. It will be the right for a playoff game at home. Jays more than likely have will need one more win to really solidify a playoff spot, which we think they'll get that next week at Northwest Class. Brody Hinkle catches it in the backfield behind the 30. Gets out to the 35-yard line, pickup of three. As, uh, again, Guthrie be big favorites next week against Northwest Classen. And then it's McGinnis and Guthrie on Gelsma for the right for a home playoff game. Of course, Guthrie would have to take care of business in week number 10 on the road at Lott Eisenhower. Lott Eisenhower down this year without the do the big part of that graduation of R.J. Fisher, a talented running back baseball player for Lot Nike over the last couple of years. Blue Jays to the line of scrimmage, fourth down and five. They'll go for it at their own 36 yard line. Marcellus in motion from left to right. Jackson takes the snap, looks at the throw, center of the field, triple coverage. It's almost intercepted. I think the three Titans were trying to make sure they didn't run into each other and hurt themselves as it falls incomplete. Brody Hinkle, the intended receiver for Guthrie. And it'll be a turnover on downs. Guthrie now 2 of 12 passing on the night for five passing yards. Guthrie offense, if they can't get back onto the field, right now stand at 80 yards of total offense on 46 snaps of the football. That's less than two yards per play. Well, our defensive lines has been absolutely dominant tonight, Chris. And we've said repeatedly, just Jays has had a hard time getting anything going. All begins up front. Couple big plays. Two maybe big plays for Guthrie. Marcellus on a little reverse. Jackson on a run. Then there's been a couple of 15-yard penalties for against Carl Albert that has moved the ball. But Guthrie's gotten into Carl Albert territory. Deep Carl Albert, I would call deep Carl Albert territory twice tonight. Dadrian Taylor up the middle. Kind of surprised he's still in there. Coming off a knee injury in week one, just playing. But he does go up the middle. Takes it from the 36 to the 32-yard line. Pick up a four yards. Stevenson in on the tackle. Brings up second down. Take a look at the night for Dadrian Taylor. Craig gets those numbers in there. I don't think he's got that one in quite yet. So that's 24 carries for 97 yards. So Taylor needs about three more yards to go over the 100 yards rushing of the night. Maybe that's the a minor reason why he still might be in there. Remains in there as the pistol back, offset pistol here. Is Ben Harris will take the shotgun snap, puts it in the belly of Taylor, running on the right side across the 30, first down across the 25, spinning down to the 24-yard line, pick up of eight yards. That should solidify 100 yards tonight for Dadrian Taylor. He had 135 yards in the week one win over Midwest City. Before, didn't even play the entire ball game, but he has 100 rushing yards tonight. Clock stops momentarily for the chains. And there they go. 325, 324 to play in the ball game. Carl Albert 21, got 3-0. Titans look like they're headed to 7-0 on the season. Carl Albert McGinnis still to play. I think that's senior night at McGinnis. It's a week 10 matchup, I do believe. Carl Albert McGinnis. It's a senior night somewhere. It might be week nine as we have a flag on the play. Stops the clock with 3.02. False start. So Carl Albert, their only test left will be Bishop McGinnis. A win there will give them the district championship 5A2. They will get to host two playoff games and then It'll come down to Guthrie McGinnis for that 2-3 spot. And the 4 spot in District 5A2 is going to be, I think, settled between Woodward and Piedmont. They will play in Week 10. I believe that game is in Piedmont uh, this year. So we'll see how that falls out. And got to get a little 5A1 action. Ardmore Altus thinks that's going to be a 1-2 type deal. Then, of course, Duncan still has a big argument in the middle of that as well. First down of 15 for the Carl Albert Titans from the Guthrie 29-yard line. Harris turns around, hands it off to Taylor. Flag thrown in the middle of the field. 
as Taylor goes across the 25-yard line, down in around the 23, but this one's coming back, a penalty on. The Titans look like a hold in the middle of the field. Of course, for the Jays, they got to come out of this and move on, get ready for next week, as you said, Chris. Take some things away from this. Defense played well most of the night. Long, long time out on the field tonight. Chop block there on the call, so that will back him up. Ben Harris, not the best of passing nights for him. Just 10 of 26 for 151 yards. Does have those two touchdown passes, though. First one from 40 yards out, the next one to 20 yards out. Both of those were went to Anthony Davis. Get credit to the Guthrie defense. They've done a good job tonight. So with the chop block penalty, it moves it back to the Titan, excuse me, back to the Guthrie 45 yard line to set up your casual first down and, was that 30? First down and 31. Dajerin Taylor, pistol back. Sure he'll get the call here. Gets the carry on the right side. Across the 45, tripped up at the 40. They'll call him down at the 38. Of course, Taylor, Carl Everett might try to be getting back in the game shape if they're missing four or five weeks of play. Just getting back in game shape toward the end of this season here. 152, 151 until the end of this one. We'll be sure to join us here in the Terra Insure Group post-game show. Fans starting to make their way out of here as inside Gelsman Stadium. One thirty-one, one thirty left. Titans probably need two more snaps, I think, to end this one here. Taylor, handoff, breaks the tackle to the thirty-five. A couple of yards. Third down and 20 upcoming. 113, 112. Titans will win their third straight over the Blue Jays. Titans improve their win streak to 29 games. Got to go all the way back to the 2016 season, the last time they lost. I think the last time they did lost was to Bishop McGinnis mm. in the regular season. Of course, Carl Albert has beaten Bishop against the last two years in the state championship game. Third down, 21. Possibly the final play of this ball game. Taylor up the middle, spins, there's a flag. And it'll be down at the 27 yard line. Pick up a nine, but again, this one looks to be going back. So we'll have one more play with 37 seconds left on the game clock. Jays weighing their options of what to do with the flag. They'll move Carl Albert back for the final snap of this one. Holding against the Titans. So it was first down and 30. Now it's third down and 30 back at the 45. Adrian Taylor, looks like we're getting ready to see some victory formation for the Titans. We'll take a knee here and get out of Guthrie with a 21-0 win here. Harrison, the shotgun, will take the snap under 25 seconds. He's good to go now as we await the final snap and knee. There's a snap and a knee. Just need to go down. No need to wait there. And that will end this one here. Carl Albert Titans come in. Ranked number one. They'll leave Guthrie ranked number one with a 21-0 victory over the Guthrie Blue Jays. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, it's the Terror Insure Group postgame show. This is Guthrie Blue Jay football on 93.7 FM, KSBI. KSBI. 
It's a beautiful day to introduce people to the golden goodness of Golden Chick. So this is your first time you've had Golden Chick. What do you think? Absolutely delicious. And these are 100% tenderloin, no mystery meat. I love them. They're oh, so okay. juicy and tender. How long do you think it takes to marinate a perfect piece of chicken? Probably 20 minutes. Yeah, about 20. An hour? What if I told you 24 hours? Wow. I feel like one of those infomercial guys. But wait, there's more time marinating the chicken. One taste and you're golden. Golden Chick. I need this pack. Oh, okay. Oh. Effidem Bank is a neighborhood bank with eight branches and 17 ATM locations across four counties in central Oklahoma. Effidem Bank can help you with all of your personal, business, and agricultural banking needs or simply add efficiency to your business. Check out Effidem Bank with online and mobile banking at www.fmbankok.com or download their app and have all of their services in the palm of your hand. Effidem Bank is a neighbor you can count on. Effidem Bank, member FDIC. Linda here with Jim and our Red River Roofing crew. You've known us for 16 years of quality roofing services, and we are also proud installers of Diamond Coat Pre-Finished Siding. This quality wood siding product is scratch resistant, comes in custom color options, and will actually increase your home's resale value. With a 30-year no-fade warranty, this siding is sure to impress. Durability is number one, so choose a stylish exterior siding that will last. Call today to boost your home's curb appeal with beautiful Diamond Coat Siding. Visit us at Red River Com. Coming up next, it's the Terra Insure Group postgame show featuring stats, highlights, plays of the game, on-field interviews, and the player of the game. Sometimes you need immediate care and can't get in to see your doctor during regular hours. With Mercy Convenient Care and Guthrie, you can walk in without an appointment and get the medical attention you need at a lower cost and with shorter waiting time than your local emergency room. The Mercy Convenient Care is located at 2919 South Division. For any concerns, call 4 Five two eight two six three zero one. Services are provided by Mercy Hospital, Logan County. Choose Guthrie. Choose Mercy. And we welcome you inside the Terror Insure Group post game show. Carl Albert Titans, the mighty Titans, come in the Gels Stadium in the state in the game of the week inside the state of Oklahoma. And uh, really, truly didn't really live up to the billing there as it was a frustrating night for the Guthrie offense as they are shut out here tonight against the Titans as Carl Albert jumped out to a 14-0 lead in, in the first quarter. It ended up being the halftime score. Carl Albert got a touchdown. What was that in the fourth quarter? Yeah, fourth quarter. And we'll have that scoring summary here in just a little bit. But the Titans won it 21-0. Carl Albert, 29-game winning streak. Their quarterback, Ben Harris, he's just a sophomore. He's now 20-0 and 0 on the, uh, in his career as the starting quarterback. And uh, the Titans have now, I think that's what, 34 out of 35 last, of their last ball games. Maybe 30, I can't remember what it was, but it's something ridiculous. As uh, Carl Albert will remain the number one team in Class 5A football. Uh, again, with the victory here over Guthrie. This is the Terror Insure Group post-game show. Be sure to visit Terror Insure Group. They're located 2603 South Division, and they got so many carriers out there to choose from, and that's uh, so many carriers underneath one roof, and, and they can get you in the right direction. They'll put your numbers in there, crunch them, and, and send them out to all those companies, and they find the right deal for you. It's a great deal. Uh, be sure to visit Seth Robbins, Jason Herzl, Dennis Oaks uh, out there at 2603 South Division, of course, uh, you can always, always find them online at TIGOK.com. Time now for our Guthrie North Church player of the game. With that, let's go downstairs with Phil Nichols. Chris, I am here with senior Campbell Leach. Campbell, I know it's always hard um, after a loss to come over here and have a conversation. We just had outstanding games all year long. Um, nothing different about tonight. Of course, I know this is a tough one to take, but Talk a little about the, the you guys didn't quit. You guys kept competing. Talk a little about tonight and then moving on. You got a lot to play for. Still got a first round playoff game here at home out, out on the line. So just talk a little about your team and kind of moving forward from here. You know, I'm, I'm proud of my boys. We all worked extremely hard. Unfortunately, we just didn't come out with the dub tonight. But it's going to help us in the long run. And we're just going to keep grinding. And we're going to see them again. We're going to get revenge. Dadrian, or excuse me, uh, Carl Albert uh, Campbell with a couple of passing scores down the field in the first quarter, 40-20. Did a great job, I thought, on Dadrian Taylor there in that first half, and for the most part of the second half. He finishes with over 100 yards, but uh, how did you guys feel like you went up against one of the best running backs in the state? 
you know, I, I feel like our defense just played the best that we could, and they have playmakers, so they're going to make some plays, yeah. of course. But, you know, I'm really proud of our defense and our offense, but unfortunately we couldn't get anything going tonight. Not but, the Yeah, not the perfect season. It's now 6-1 and one on the year, but uh, your goals are still in front of you. So yes, sir. The, the big part of this is how, how you guys handle this mentally. How are you going to be, as a leader, uh, approach your teammates in, the, in, the, in a big week of practice? You know, this is going to help us a lot. This is going to... You know, I feel like this should get us closer as a team, and uh, we should just keep grinding because I never want to feel this again. And Campbell, uh, again, Campbell Leach, our Guthrie North Church player of the game. Talk about your career. I mean, you, you have just kind of gotten better and better and better as your career has moved on. Just talk about what has led you to what you're, what, what you're doing right now is playing great football. Well, a lot of hard work. <laughs> a lot of hard work. You know, I, I, I've just – all my teammates have been through it with me all, and – they know I've been at the bottom, but we're still trying to get to the top as a team. Absolutely. Well, Campbell, I know it's not the outcome that you wanted, but, again, the good news is your goals are still in front of you. Northwest class next week. McGinnis coming in here. I, I would certainly think uh, having a home playoff game back here in Jelsma to end a senior career would be one of your top goals coming in. Yes, sir. That, that's, that's on our checklist for sure. All right, Campbell. Appreciate you joining us here on the uh, TIG postgame show and being named our Guthrie North Church Player of the Game. No problem. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Campbell Leach, the Guthrie North Church Player of the Game, as the Carlisle Titans come in here and win it by a final score of 21 to zero. Take another time out. When we come back, I think we'll have the head football coach join us here. At Terra Insure Group, you'll be helped by lifelong Blue Jay fans, Jason Herzl, Dennis Oaks, and Seth Robbins. They aren't limited to any single provider. They'll work with you to find the carrier and the plan that fits you best. Terra Insure Group is an independent insurance agency specializing in home, auto, and commercial lines of insurance. Call Terra Insure Group at 293-4880 or stop by at 2403 South Division or visit them online at TIGOK.com. Terra Insure Group, insuring your world. After this, we bring you more from the stadium as the Terra Insure Group postgame show continues. I'm Brian Sterkle with Interbank. You can bank on Guthrie's home team, the banking professionals at Interbank. Our decision makers and the people who serve you work closely together to provide responsible service and personal attention. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing our friends in Guthrie and the surrounding communities at the Blue Jay football games. We're located at 224 East Oklahoma, or you can reach us by phone at 282-0470. Interbank, in it for you. Member FDIC. Sometimes you need immediate care and can't get in to see your doctor during regular hours. With Mercy Convenient Care in Guthrie, you can walk in without an appointment and get the medical attention you need at a lower cost and with shorter waiting time than your local emergency room. The Mercy Convenient Care is located at 2919 South Division. For any concerns, call 405-282-6301. Services are provided by Mercy Hospital Logan County. Choose Guthrie. Choose Mercy. Welcome back. Jelsma Stadium, historic downtown Guthrie. This is the Terror Insure Group postgame show as the Carl Albert Titans come in the Jelsma Stadium, the number one team in Class 5A. They've won 20-some-odd games in a row. They're 7-0 on the year, and they're a pretty good football team, as we all knew going into tonight's contest. There's no, there was no, no, no doubt about that as they – Take down the Jays, shut them out by a final score, 21-0. As we do each and every week, we visit with Blue Jay head coach Kelly Beebe, and let's go downstairs with Phil Nichols. Chris, I am here with head football coach Kelly Beebe. Coach, you know, obviously not the outcome any of us wanted, but some things to take away. Kids competed, played hard, entire ball game. I thought your defense played well, um, the balance of the evening. But let's talk about this game a little bit. And then moving forward, still got a lot to play for, that home field playoff game sitting out there for us to still go get. So just walk us through that. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you know, uh, incredible atmosphere down here tonight. Both sides were packed, quality fans on both sides, and, and two great football teams on the field. Uh, you know, one of our keys to the game was just basically to try to sustain drives, keep their offense limited. Uh, we had a little trouble doing that. Uh, had some field position issues in the first half. And, you know, really I can think of three plays in the game that, that uh, you know, um, two long passes on third down to 15 and then the screen play that, that set them up uh, in the third quarter. Uh, you know, I think we had allowed 20 yards rushing in the first half. And, uh, you know, I felt like our kids battled uh, the entire night. I felt like they played with class and character on all three sides of the football. And, 
and uh, we just came up short. Coach, uh, your, your thoughts uh, on Dejan Taylor, the way you guys were able to do him. I think he went over 100 yards, but it looked like for the most part you guys were able to contain him throughout the entire night. Uh, you know, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good back. Uh, you know, I think he worked some rust off through the first half. You know, he's been out. Uh, but uh, all in all, you know, we didn't see many superstar runs out of him. Our kids were, were uh, gapping things up uh, and, and flying to the football and, and swarm tackling, and, and that's a really good back. Uh, really good quarterback and obviously well-coached offensive line with receiving threats. So, you know, it, opposite of a Will Phillips where you're just defending one kid, you know, you're defending formations and, and RPOs with these guys. So, uh, yeah, defensively, I, I thought we, we battled really hard, you know, but but uh, it's a three-phase game. We know that. We live and die together. Uh, you know, I, I saw our kids giving great effort on in all three phases. Uh, you know, we just, like I say, we come up short tonight. Uh, our goals are still intact. You know, we wanted to host a home playoff game this year, you know, and we still have that opportunity available to us. Um, you know, we got Northwest Classic next week, and then we got another big showdown with McGinnis uh, week nine. So uh, we got to heal up a little bit and and uh, and and learn from this and, and get that fire in the belly and, and go back to work. Coach, we knew the Carl Albert defensive line was pretty darn good. Their linebackers are above average, and uh, they were just able to uh, – uh, you get some penetration. I thought that defensive line for Carl Albert was better than I thought coming in. You know, I thought they were outstanding yeah. bunch. I, I, Coach Mick and I talked about it during the week. I don't know that they dropped off uh, on their defensive line uh, speed-wise uh, and size-wise. You know, and those guys played a lot of football as underclassmen last year when the starters were sitting on the sideline with the great team they had a year ago. So they played a lot of football. Uh, and um, they, they were a handful for us tonight. They played with great, great effort. You know, Carl Albert prides themselves on defense a lot like we do. And, uh, you know, uh, I thought we saw two, two pretty darn uh, good defensive efforts tonight. Uh, difference in the game was about three plays. Coach, as you mentioned, the goal's still in front of you. A short week this week with Northwest Classic on Thursday night. And then you got right back here with McGinnis with a big one before finishing up with Lawton Eisenhower. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the thick of things as far as, as the district uh, goes, as far as being able to host. Uh, the way it's all shaking out, I, I think, you know, it's probably Guthrie and McGinnis are going to battle for that number that number two spot and that right to host a playoff game. And, and that's exciting. You know, uh, you know, we'd have taken this the last two years to have been in this yep. position. And uh, it's like I told our kids at halftime, guys, I said, you were down 49 to nothing to this bunch last year at halftime. And, uh, you know, you're two plays away from being 0-0 right now. And, uh, you know, I thought our kids showed class uh, and, and, and integrity, and I thought they played as hard as they could play uh, all night long. Well, Coach, we appreciate not the outcome we wanted, but uh, <laughs> Carl Albert is uh, Carl Albert. And uh, they, they've, they've done this to a lot of ball clubs. But, uh, again, the big picture for fans driving back home and getting ready for another week is the goals are still in front of us. Absolutely, guys. And, and again, you know, I, nobody hates to lose more than I do. Uh, but when your kids come out and they play with great effort, yep. uh, you know, uh, you just got to love them. And, 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 and I hurt for them, uh, you know, and uh, we'll get over this. We're tough, and, uh, and we'll just keep building towards our goals of, of uh, hosting a playoff game. Coach Baby, thank you for your time, and uh, best of luck next week at Northwest Classic. Absolutely. Thank you, fellas. Hey, Coach Kelly Baby, join us here on the Terror Insure Group postgame show as the Carl Albert Titans, two-time defending state champions. Defeat the Blue Jays by a final score tonight, 21 to 0. Take another time out here as we come back and wrap it up. The post game show presented by our good friends at Terra Insure Group. Come back, look at the scoring summary, a few stats and numbers. Might have time for a quick score update after we finish it up here. This is the Terra Insure Group post game show. Hello, Blue Jay family. I'm Pastor Hetty. I want to invite you to North Church Guthrie, where you can expect fun, Bible-centered kids and student ministries, life-giving groups, engaging worship, and powerful messages. I would love to see you and your family at North Church Guthrie this Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. at Guthrie Upper Elementary School, where our vision is to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. And remember, God loves you, and go win. Don't go away. More of the Terra Insure Group postgame show in a moment. 
Hey, Blue Jay fans, Eskridge Chevrolet is a proud supporter of Guthrie High School sports. This season, Eskridge Chevrolet at I-35 in Guthrie is cheering you the whole way and will help you score a game-winning deal in getting the new or used vehicle that you need. Don't worry about your credit history. Eskridge Chevy can get you approved. Come see us at Eskridge Chevrolet. Just a short drive to I-35 in the Guthrie exit on Division Street. Call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY or visit EskridgeChevy.com. When it comes to Guthrie Blue Jay Athletics, Hayes Funeral Home is a proud supporter from the first game all the way to the championship game. Along with many years of experience in funeral service, the Hayes family brings compassion and professional service during difficult times. Owners Chuck and Lynette Hayes take pride in providing families and their loved ones quality care. Chuck and Lynette have not only supported families in the Guthrie area for countless years, but have supported Guthrie student athletes succeeding on the playing field and in the classroom. Hayes Funeral Home is located on the corner of Noble and Wentz, or simply give them a call at 405 282 3100. Final thoughts from the stadium are ahead on the Terra Insure Group post game show. When garage door problems occur, don't call a kind of service company or maybe a repair guy. Call Paul Creed at A-Team Overhead Door. Paul owns and operates his company and has over 15 years of experience in residential and commercial overhead door service. Paul provides all garage door services from repairs to installations. With free estimates, Paul will work with you to decide the best possible solution for your garage door or opener problems. Call A-Team Overhead Door today, 405-642-7065. At Terra Insure Group, you'll be helped by lifelong Blue Jay fans, Jason Herzl, Dennis Oaks, and Seth Robbins. They aren't limited to any single provider. They'll work with you to find the carrier and the plan that fits you best. Terra Insure Group is an independent insurance agency specializing in home, auto, and commercial lines of insurance. Call Terra Insure Group at 293-4880 or stop by at 2403 South Division or visit them online at TIGOK.com. Terra Insure Group, insuring your world. Welcome back to Jones the Save for the final time. Here on the Terra Insure Group post game show. Carl Albert Titans defeat the Guthrie Blue Jays 21 to 0. Titans 7 0 overall. Hey, Carl Albert clinches a playoff spot. They're 4 0 in district. Guthrie Blue Jays dropped their first game of the year 6 1 now. 3 1 in district play. Blue Jays will look to get back on the winning track. Looks like they probably will next week as they travel to Oklahoma City, take on Northwest Classen. As you heard, Bishop McGinnis will be here for senior night. And a big, big ball game. We think that will be for a home playoff spot. We think maybe for that number two spot. Of course, McGinnis still thinks, uh, hey, we're McGinnis. We're, we're pretty darn good. We, we still got a shot at Carl Albert. We can still win the district title. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if you're a Guthrie fan, you obviously want Carl Albert to win out, win the district championship, and then have McGinnis come here and uh, uh, give your best shot there against the Irish for that home playoff spot. And it'll be a tough first-round game. I know it's about a month away, but it'll be a tough game whether it's home or away uh, come first week. But you always want to play that first playoff game on your home turf. John Vance Motor scoring summary. Titans scored two times in the first quarter. 40-yard touchdown pass and a 20-yard touchdown pass, both going to Anthony Davis. That was the halftime score as well, 14-0, and that was actually the score at the end of the third quarter. And then Adrian Taylor, or excuse me, Adrian Taylor with a one-yard touchdown run early in the fourth quarter. They give the Titans their final score of the night. And the final score on the scoreboard as well. 21 to 0 is the final score. Real quickly, we'll just go over some quick unofficial numbers here uh, in this ball game. We'll refresh the screen, make sure we have the most updated numbers here. Uh, Carl Albert, 264 yards of offense. Guthrie, just 80 yards of offense tonight. They snapped the ball 46 times and only got 1.7 yards per play the entire night. Guthrie finishes with eight passing yards. Guthrie just 3 of 13 through the air. Jackson was intercepted twice as Carl Albert secondary covered up the Jays receivers pretty good the in, throughout the entire night. Defensive line for Carl was able to get pressure early and often as well, and, and the numbers offensively for the Jays uh, show that. Carl Albert penalized 13 times. That's one thing Coach Mike Corley will not like. Blue Jays just penalized five times uh, this evening. Carl Albert had 15 first downs. Guthrie had seven. 
uh, on the entire night. Ben Harris, the sophomore quarterback, 10 of 26 passing, 151 yards, and mentioned those two touchdown passes as well. Dadrian Taylor unofficially 27 carries for 119 yards, just a little over four yards per carry, and then had that fourth quarter touchdown as well. Leading receiver, Anthony Davis, three catches, two touchdowns. He had 75 yards receiving the football as well. And those are some of your numbers uh, in this ball game. Take a look at some 5A scores here real quick as we get ready to wrap up here just before the 10 o'clock hour here on 93.7 FM KSBI. Altus holds off Lott MacArthur. Final score there, 37-30. to Altus holding on to that number two spot in the district. Ardmore holding on to that number one spot in the district. Ardmore... Uh, they moved the score on me somewhere here, but Ardmore, um, yeah, last night defeated Southeast 48-0. to zero. The big story in 5A1 tonight is Duncan Demons off to a 7-0 and start. They take down El Reno 35-9. So Duncan up there with Ardmore and Altus in the, uh, in the fight for a home playoff game. And uh, the Duncan Demons will now begin a really tough stretch of football games uh, with Ardmore, Altus, and another opponent uh, to finish up the regular season. So we'll see how good Duncan is. But uh, some district scores tonight. Piedmont defeats Guyman 56-6. to Western, or not Western Heights, uh, McGinnis last night defeated Lawton Eisenhower 63-0. to And Woodward shuts out Northwest Classen tonight in Woodward. Final score there was 70-0. Yeah, Final score for the final time here tonight inside Jelsma Stadium for the game of the week inside the state of Oklahoma. It is the two-time defending state champion Carl Albert Titans taking down the Blue Jays by a final score of 21-0. A big thank you to Daryl Jones back in our Stillwater studio. Wouldn't want anybody else back there helping us go along here on 93.7 FM KSBI on North Central Oklahoma. It's a good signal all the way up to the Kansas line to Sepulpa Sand Springs down to Moore, Norman. El Reno, Watonga, all the way through there. So we got a great audience out there. A big thank you to all of our great video uh, viewers out there. One of our best tele televised games that we've had, and we continue to get better and better. We appreciate you guys tuning us in. Our next broadcast will be next Thursday night. Again, Thursday, fall break ball game when Guthrie travels to Oklahoma City to take on Northwest Classen. Our free game show begins at 6.30. We kick off at 7 o'clock. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, and as always, we uh, appreciate our fine staff here. Braden Russell on the on the main camera, always does a great job. Glad she's on our team as she joined us here this year. Craig Flake, year in and year out on the stats and inside the numbers, all that good stuff, does a good job with that. Aaron Ryburn uh, producing the entire thing here tonight, so a big thank you to him. Does a great job. Uh, also, GTV20 with the city of Guthrie. We sneak him away for a little bit to uh, bring his expertise with us. Appreciate that. For my partner, Phil Nichols, I'm Chris Evans. We'll talk to you next Thursday when the Blue Jays take on the Northwest Classen. Until then, have a great night, have a great weekend, and as always, go Blue Jays. You've been listening to Guthrie Blue Jay Football, home of the four-time state champions on the Guthrie Radio Network. Guthrie Football 2018 is brought to you by the world. John Vance Auto Group, where it's comfortable to buy a car. Guthrie North Church, love God, love people, follow Jesus. Mercy Hospital, Logan County, your life is our life's work. And Eskridge Chevrolet, a name you can trust for over 50 years. Guthrie Blue Jay Football is also brought to you by f and Bank, Guthrie Tag Agency, A-Team Overhead Door, Nelson Monument Company, Hayes Funeral Home, Sonic at I-35 and Highway 33. Red River Roofing and Merritt Roberts Farm Bureau, Oklahoma.